Oh, you can share it about. No, this bit now on YouTube. Ah. Yep, no worries. So, that's, that's then, we're, we're ready now. Um, so, yeah, and um, what's up, guys? Welcome to the stream, and we've got the one and only Nassau band on the team. How are you guys all doing? Yeah, bud. All good, thank you. How are you, man? Good, good. Um, so, yeah, hi, hi. So, yeah, and um, as you see, um, I'm, I'm, I kind of got the, I've got a, I've been a wee bit different to myself. I've put, uh, and got a really cool shirt on, and I've got sort of my band and uh, my band skill with me. I brought along to the interview, which is changed. I never really just, I just normally just put my band t shirts on, but I thought I'd just a wee bit different, just a wee bit summery, and a wee bit brighter colours, and be a bit of a, Sort of gram and sort of skateboarder type guy, rocking rock, rocking that southern groove metal look. Indeed, you, you literally look like you're from Pennycook. I can't like, I'm probably like I'm probably like a guy from I'm probably like the I'm probably like Luke from Dog Tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that was exactly a, what I was looking. Yeah, that's a shout out. No, that's a shout out to him as well. <laughs> also, Sorry, yeah. the stand keeps muting my microphone. <laughs> Everything, everyone, everyone's coming through okay. It's, I can hear you guys fine. Yep. All right. There we go. Is Sin, are you okay? I'm okay. Can't hear you very well, Sin. No. You're, you're, mute, you're muted. I'm hearing you through uh, Clark's mic. <laughs> Did you mute yourself instead of muting me? Myself instead of you, yeah. <laughs> right, you kind of Hello. Uh, oh. Now you've muted yourself again. My... Or someone's muted you. Oh, right. I've... Oh, hang on a sec. I tried to mute him for me, but apparently that muted him for everyone. Sweet. <laughs> See, Clark oh. and I are in the same room um, as I have a very loud, loud household at the moment. So we're keeping social distancing. He's all the way over there. I can maybe hit him with something, but there's nothing sounds, to throw. Sounds good here. Yeah, we'll have to deal with uh, a little bit of echo. I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, I'm fine, Chris. How are you? I'm doing grand, then. Thanks, then. Enjoying this then, warm day we have then today. Depends we get. Depends we get a heat wave. After summer that. solstice is behind us now. Yesterday was the summer solstice, so it's the start of the shorter days. We're heading towards winter. So, eat up what we've got. I woke up at five o'clock this morning and thought it was noon. Yeah, I can relate to that. I was well up around about the same sort of time. That's why I've got Red Bull. You guys slept then it, last night? It feels like yeah, <laughs> five. It probably at five a.m. It's kind of like eight, eight, like kind of like eight, eight a.m. in the winter. In the yeah, top. it's a bit like that. So that's what I mean. And um, oh man, it's been really hot. And so I'm, I mean, I've taken then, I've had taken them some, I've been taking some men hay fever tablets as well. So I think that's probably how I feel a wee bit tired. But hey, hold on, I'm going to, going to manage, going to do this. Let's do, let's go for it. Let's do this. Get, let's get some uh, rest disaster. This is what I it know is. you mean, man. Like, I, um, I'm just not built for hot weather. 20 degrees, I start melting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. It's insane. That's probably why I've got this T-shirt on. It's usually just put a band. Usually we just put something black on, and then you know like a, you know like an oven, and then obviously this. I think this has been much better having this white shirt on. So, um, hey, it's and then we this bit matches my like, uniform as well that I've got on today. So, so oh, yeah. yeah. It's probably be a cool, cool interest as well having bandana and bandana. I'm completely out of my element. I have no fashion sense, and about three sets of clothes, as you may have been able to tell. He's like uh, a cartoon character. All, I am, yeah. all black. I put a lot of work into coming across as boring as I am. You know how hard it is to find any shirt without a label. It's insane. That's why I've only got three. They're legendary things. All black. <laughs> He has his black outfit and his black outfit. Like he works in a, like he works in a, works in a, <laughs> like in Costa or something. Yeah, why not? Let's go for that. It'd be your dream job. Mm. 
Much I bet you could just like bulk order black t-shirts. Big pardon, Ben. You didn't really come through there. Oh. I didn't hear that one either. Try again. Hello? Ben? Did we lose a Ben? Is he? Yeah, sorry. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be trying again. I was just saying, oh, I bet right. you could just like order plain black t shirt. In bulk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a crease worth. I spend most yeah. of my time in a Jedi dressing gown. What are you guys talking about? I'm doing it right. <laughs> Three sets of clothes in a Jedi dressing gown. That's where it's at. A dressing gown in this weather? How? <laughs> Nothing else, mate. That's how you do it. Yeah, I don't wear anything else Dude. with the dressing gown, man. Dude, I'm not wearing anything on my bottom half. <laughs> hey! Neither am I. And <laughs> Clark's not best ever. He's getting an eyeful. <laughs> He's wiping it on the door handles, man. <laughs> well, this conversation turn. So, well, we guys start the questions then. Are you guys yep. all ready for the questions? Yes, yeah. yeah. We just asked the band questions and that end. So, I mean, I remember we had you guys on the on the sandwich as metal show when as well, didn't we? We did it. Yep. We actually had the on the show. As well, so yeah, there was a, a decent bit of banter had at that show. It was good fun. Yeah, that was, that was a lot. Yeah, but we're doing. I'm doing mines from home now, so as you see, I'm still putting them out there. But they, yeah, I'm doing them, doing them on the on Audacity and that, recording them and playing tracks that way. So and then send them on through so they can play them live. So I'm doing keeping myself, keep myself going. We we. We still want to. We still can use that space for new shows and putting out, putting out the same shows every time. Because that's what we'll be doing. Yes, good man. Audacity is the old workhorse. Yep, I think so. Eh? And I wonder if they keep updating that. It was just so, perfect. So, I don't think it did any update. I, I think it's still it's kind of well, it could be on XP if you think about it as well. Yeah. I had I had that on XP. <laughs> It still looks like it could be on XP to this day. Yeah, yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they haven't it. updated the, the the GUI at all. But yeah, if I'm like, if I need to really quickly program like whatever's going into, uh, really quickly record whatever's going into my computer, I'll just put it through Audacity instead of bothering to load up Cubase. It's quite quick as well doing all that as well. It makes yeah. everything, everything's so quick on that as well, especially when you have like a fast PC and it's just so quick doing that. Big recommend. Audacity yeah. can sponsor us. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing now. That, that well-known open source software can sponsor us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you, you guys can use Audacity center. to record. You guys maybe should use Audacity to record tracks or something, or practice, or maybe have like a big sort of line in or something. You guys can sort of act free in the one line. <laughs> Harnessing yeah. the power of Audacity. <laughs> That would be a lot. Of, that means in a lot of power for all the all the all the sound going right through. We, we we wouldn't want to give them any bad press. I don't think. <laughs> Absolutely not. Audacity is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah don't be associated with the likes of us. Yeah. Let's hope it doesn't disappear. Let's hope it still webs on, yeah. like MS Paint. <laughs> MS Paint will never die. <laughs> The tribe isn't dead. Uh, ben, you're, I, you I thought are... MS Paint was dead. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's dying, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, no. Well, that was a news article, I think, and then obviously people saw news at. Well, well, by by dying, it's no longer going to be um, bundled with Windows. You'll still be able to just, just download it. It just won't be on there by default, I think. was actually Right, was. okay. I think that that's the, I think that's the case, um, and yeah, oh. the the new logo actually that I did then for Sam Reader's Metal Show was actually done on Nameless Paint. Nice. <laughs> the red guitar that I've got now. Oh, you yeah, did, eh? What do you think? Do you think you like? Do you fair that to the fox? Are you going up? Sorry. Did you fair the guitar to the green fox, or would you prefer the green fox to the guitar? 
I don't know, the guitar is working fine. I mean, MS Paint, you can pull some pretty crazy artwork. I'm not sure if you guys remember uh, some of the old old PlayStation games, uh, Shadow of the Horned Rat and Dark Omen. They're back sort of setting world on an MS Paint, so you can actually get crazy detail there. So uh, I'm all big up on the MS Paint side. Well, there's that, there's that Jibble Draw It guy. <laughs> Jibble Paint It, yeah. Jibble Paint It, yeah. <laughs> he is the best. Yeah. Mind you, that, maybe they'll make some game... Maybe they'll make some games out of that, and maybe maybe they to just keep using them as paint and make some like sort of very two D games, simple games. That they just, uh, I've just seen some it. bad games use MS Paint. <laughs> it's probably games that are just the restart there, and then obviously they just they don't really they don't really get out anywhere to the public. They're probably like this be part one of pod party games you can just download and on a wee small. Ben, are you outside? Ben was a tragic victim of a drive-by shooting. What's that noise in the end? You got a bit of background noise coming in there, Ben. That's the easiest thing. All right, go back in. Don't run noise even. Hi, Tess. <laughs> Tess, 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 Tess. That'll be Ben's partner, Tess, we're hearing. Sorry, guys. Hey. Uh, just a bit of confusion regarding plans there. Yeah. Uh, have you guys want to ask questions then? We'll sat, we'll sat there and asking the questions now, shall we? Yep, yeah. sure. So, yeah, first question, how did you guys start the band? Well, uh, I, me and uh, Clark sort of started off, sort of like I had a whole bunch of songs lying around written, and I was like, right, we're gonna, gonna make a band and do something with this. So I help hit up Clark to play drums for them. Uh, like me and Clark, we we're going to uni together, and then, uh, Sin actually was moving to like I knew Sin from Aberdeen way back, like me and him from. We were in bands before, and he came. He actually moved down to Edinburgh, and I was like, "Well, we could use a vocalist, so he might as well get him, him on board as well." And Josh, uh, the other guitarist who isn't here, um, him and Clark are kind of a package deal. It's like buy one get one free. So, so he, so we, so we got him along as well as another, another guitarist. And then we, did, and then we were went for ages, just the four of us jamming. Um, Try to find a bassist for ages and ages, and then eventually um, posted an ad on Facebook, and we auditioned Ben. Well, we, we auditioned a bunch of bassists, bassists, by which I mean Ben was the only one who showed up, and he got it by <laughs> by default. <laughs> so, and here we are. <laughs> we had some transitions. I mean, uh, Josh started out on bass, and we had yeah. Kier on guitar. Yeah, and, and uh, you're, you're flat, mate. Yeah. I'm, you know what it's like with every band you're, you're changing up lineups you're trying to find a solid sort of setup but luckily we had that kind of core working for us and we we're looking for that extra extra member um but Kier ended up leaving um of course josh being as good a guitar as he is naturally yeah, just filled into that power of vacuum it was yeah. like well yeah um and from then it was literally just try to find some some kind of bassist and from that point it was, it's an awkward part because there's quite a lot of different complexities in the tracks themselves so you kind of want something to like, complement that finding a basis in that regard can be quite hard uh, so i think we we're quite lucky in stumbling across ben um, you were but... very lucky in stumbling across ben i am not yeah. a bassist in that sense like <laughs> i kind of yeah. I like to do the opposite of what most bassists like to do which means i suit this perfectly mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing as well like you make it sound like ben was some sort of consolation prize but he fit it in <laughs> instantly yeah, yeah like... absolutely it was um, more like, like a, a matter of fate, right? Like, yeah, yeah definitely. It was just what what was meant to be. I don't think I've <laughs> ever locked in as tight with a with a bassist because you know the drums and bass, you gotta really get that in there, and mm -hmm. yeah, just oh, I was good seeing Ben perform. It's very mutual, man. It's very mutual. Uh, like, and performing together, I think, is particularly where it's at. Welcome to the Nassau Circle, jerk. <laughs> yeah. Now, once we got this sort of final, that, that final setup, uh, from then on, it was pretty much just getting used to how each other play. Because uh, as, as Magnus said, uh, Clark and Josh, they've been playing together a lot. 
so you, you can tell having two people together have been playing together a lot and myself and Magnus have worked together a lot um, and having been in there as adaptable as he is to kind of try to bridge that gap as we all kind of bridge the gap between ourselves it helped kind of solidify um, our sort of general setup I think I mean it's always nice like as a when you're coming into a project if there's like a core set of members who are already really tight and know exactly what they're doing it's always easier to kind of slot in around that than it is to like i guess make something new but uh yeah y'all were just super easy to to fit in with so that's that's nice from my perspective yeah it's always um strange when you have a new member in and then eventually you forget what was originally there and what they actually wrote so if you look at the bass tracks before they were just yeah this the kind of your following guitar stuff there was a few there was a few cool things, a few you know, cool licks that Magnus had come up with, but Ben just took all that to another level. So kind. I'm spilling stuff on myself, one second. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a bib. Yes. <laughs> yeah, have a towel. I don't want an actual bib. No, I'm fine. It's fine. No! <laughs> <laughs> That's that's cool for when it's screaming you coming in to double scream. That's cool. <laughs> what, what I'm not you... long awake, so you'll have to forgive me. I am kind of gathering myself as we do this. I have an assortment what... of confectionery to help me get through this. But we, we got this. He clearly has their uh, camera flipped because Clark threw it off to one side and it appeared on the same side, flying at six. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got a crazy arm, man. <laughs> it's a really long arm. I've got a trampoline on the other side of the room. <laughs> so is that it's easier when you get to this level to just throw it around the other side of the world? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I might hurt someone. I never saw it coming. I thought it was coming from that way. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that's, that's actually quite cool, you guys came, so you guys obviously came all the way from Aberdeen to start the band. Well, the initially, we're, we're all from, most of us are rather, um, rather are from small villages and towns scattered across um, the sort of northeast highlands and moors and glens. And then uh, Ben came from uh, south, sort of north and south, coming down to meet in the, the centre. Yeah, yeah. It's always... It's always entertaining to hear that because to me, I grew up in the northeast of England. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it never feels like I came from the south, but I know I did from 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 y'all's perspective. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like Game of Thrones, isn't it? There's <laughs> always well, another well, like... south. <laughs> Everything's inverted when you go that far north. It gets strange. The yeah. north is a silly place. Yeah, the, it's, the, it's the, four silly are, place. the four of us oh, are yeah. all from Aberdeenshire, apart yeah. from Ben, who's from Shrewsbury. Oh, come on, Magnus. That's unnecessary. That's slander. <laughs> Libel. <laughs> Truth for <free> indeed. <laughs> I'm a southerner. Indeed not. I, all the places in England sound the same. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I happen to know for a fact that they don't. All the places in England sound hilarious. <laughs> Referencing the uh, infamous road trip there. Yeah. <laughs> ah, of course. Yes. <laughs> I mean, really, titty ho. <laughs> there's some. There, there is some very, uh, very strange place names um, across Britain in general. I think, and I think you and your brother proved that with your your little road trip escapade. Scarborough. That's where you're from. Hey, you see, I did that. <laughs> yes, and it's just as dirty a name. <laughs> but it does have a legendary fair. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is. I only, I, only, I didn't actually know if there was a fair. I just know there's a song, Scarborough Fair. Yeah, no, no. There, uh, there, there is a. That. There is a thing called Scarborough Fair, and um, it is not like the song would imply. But no parsley, sage, rosemary, or thyme. <laughs> Oh, herbs of any description, to be honest. <laughs> With you about Ben, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gotta bear in mind, though, not everybody in Scarborough is uh, prone to the same proclivities as me. <laughs> Most of them just like a lot of alcohol. And then there's like three rides that just spin you around really fast. Alcohol so I'm sure you can work out 
where the I mean, when I say there are three like three rides that spin you around really fast, I mean there are three rides there, and all it or any of them do is spin you around really fast. <laughs> Just different variations of being spun. Yeah, exactly. Um. So yeah, when there's loads of pissed up people being spun around real fast, it's not a good thing. It's not a good time. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> Today inside the Scarborough Fair. <laughs> Well, Scarborough was a city that we actually drove through once, but we didn't actually stop and walk around. So, so. <laughs> you made the right choice. <laughs> no, like to be fair, not... it's it's very picturesque. It's a, a pretty place. Nice to go on holiday. Just don't ever live there. That seems to be the theme with most of where we're from. I should say, actually. Because mm-hmm. I share that sentiment from um, the small village and stuff where I was sort of grew up around at the north. So, yeah, I can see that. Um, and Magnus, you were near Banff, I think, weren't you? I was in Banff. I'm actually in Banff right now because I'm staying with my parents for a bit during lockdown. <laughs> I'm in the same bedroom that I was raised in, basically. In anticipation of this question. Hmm? In anticipation of this question. No, I, I just happen to be here. <laughs> I mean, York is a very cool city. Not New York, but York. Yeah, York's awesome. It's very nice. Very pleasant. Because that's the that's the day. That's the story in the corner from Scarborough as well. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. go there. I've been there a couple of times. Um, yeah, nice place to live. Uh, nice place to visit. Not sure I'd want to live there still. Yeah. Not much of a music scene, I gather. Is that yeah? No, it's metal scene. It's basically nothing but it's nothing but Amon or Moth cover bands. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they've the even got they've even got a, a Viking museum, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They do the Jarvik yeah. Museum. Yep. And the National Museum of York as well, the train museum, of course. Yeah, that yeah. honestly, that's that's probably the best thing in York. I was thinking, so. wasn't that? Everything was uh, Yorkminster actually. Yorkminster Cathedral. You go inside that, it's amazing. It's, it's like how that. It's one of these things. It's like how did they build this in medieval times? It's mental. That is true, actually. I, I, I think I only ever went there when I was quite young, so I don't think it really. Me too. Like, struck me I, I don't think i had much appreciation for that kind of thing at that particular point in my life mm. whereas trains much more <laughs> yeah all right fair enough <laughs> i mean trains I'm, yeah just speaking about york again yeah i was well, actually was going to go to york before the lockdown all soon and i didn't and thought so we couldn't do that now so i mean i've been to york a few times it's this this it is nice that it's a com- it's a nice comfortable city to be in and for the day and that as well just to visit and see all the see it's different being in, obviously we've seen the same city every day and it's good to just get there and visit some other city for the day and then come back in the day as well so I've done that yeah, feature sure. and I get yeah. what you mean and <laughs> yeah everyone ever apparently I don't know why people say say and asking out Sandy they say they're from York. On the paid Wikipedia, but also that's that wouldn't be, of course. Everyone will just make jokes and asking that Zander, the York brand. <laughs> so they all live in the United States, if you didn't know. So it took a second to click there, yeah. And yeah, but I believe they all they all reside in the United States now, so they're pretty much the two of the United States more than York, probably. That would be the local venue if they've actually come back and play York. They'll love like a big fair or something. The crowds, if they've actually do. But I don't think they would, in general. I can't There's... imagine it. <laughs> There's not many sort of sites um, in, in the UK that get hit for uh, touring bands. There are a few of them, but um, not too much, really, in the scale of things. So, shall we move on to the next question, if you guys are ready or you... Yeah, man, let's go. Next question. Yep. Yeah, so next question is, um, what genre of music do you guys play? (laughs) That's a question. (laughs) That's a question, eh? Drop in. 
Hmm. What, what gods do we pray to? Did you say? <laughs> <laughs> John. Uh... So um, it's hard to say. We 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 pretty much just pick and choose, really. Um, I so, think so, we're, we're sorry, kind of setting I'm, off I'm, without the idea of. I I I, I thought it'd be funny. I I literally missed the question. I think. What genre <laughs> of music do we play? What genre? Right. I literally thought. You said what? What gods do we pray to somehow? <laughs> and I'm like, what? I'm quite partial to Apollo and Athena on Tuesdays. Yeah, Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Of my, my course. My brain hasn't engaged. Yeah. Sorry, carry on, son. Yeah, but genres. Um, I don't think we kind of set out with a specific genre in mind. Um, we just kind of pick and pull from what we feel is fun. Take it by track by track. Uh, it's a really hard question for us to answer. I'm pretty sure a lot of bands feel the same sort of way, but we do really struggle with picking a, a sort of genre yeah. for us, ourselves. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're generic. I mean, I mean, we've sort of come under the general umbrella of prog metal, I guess, you know, sort of techie stuff. But it's the. Our, my main, well, our main thing going into it was that we shouldn't. Like, like, if we write something cool, that that's what we're going to play. We're not going to say, "Well, this isn't our genre, so we're not going to play it." That that's that's been the sort of running philosophy in the band since day one, and so you could expect it. Like, if we come up with a polka metal song, we're going to play a polka metal song if we, you know, if we like it. You know, it's we really don't care. It, we'll make, we'll make it ours. It'll still yeah. be ours, but yeah, we'll, we'll try and just kind of go with it rather than say no is the usual kind of approach yeah it's nice because like other brands i'm part of like you gotta like try and remain on brand mm -hmm. um ilo being an especially big one is we're going through songs now and we're like right what's what's the ilo sound for this next bit you know this idea is good this one's not for the ace but we could use this one later and we i don't have to worry about any of that stuff in that so it's nice yeah it's the same, it's the same in, in my other band scumpos it's like if we we have we really do have a formula in that band, and if that, that, that we that we sort of try to stick to actively, and like if we come up with something that doesn't isn't with the formula, then it's like well it's yeah it's off brand you know it's it, it's not it's not right so all right so you then I'll put it in NASA. <laughs> <laughs> you know? NASA is basically like the scum pulls off cuts. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> really, really, it's the riffs that were too hard for them to play. <laughs> oh, oh, throwing some shade, back. That, that's that's not an insult. That is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Ross can Ross can barely barely hold a guitar, <laughs> let alone play. <laughs> yeah, he is screaming at the same time, though. I mean. But I'm quite happy to take the, the offcuts in that regard. If that's what it was, because yeah, I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, These are some tasty offcuts. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Sometimes the offcuts are the best bits, man. Mm -hmm. Get some of those metal giblets. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that, I mean, we've been we've been thinking of an album title, but yeah, <laughs> metal giblets. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's the other thing as well. Um, since we're we try and take from whatever we can, um, mm. you've got to be careful what you suggest. Uh, you can't just throw any suggestion out to NASA. If you throw any suggestion, it could be a joke. You could be having a laugh, and then they'll be the next day. They'll have like the tab written up, <laughs> and they're all in on this random idea. And it's like, no, no, you, you kind of be careful. But um, that was a joke, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think Satan came about? <laughs> it was it's great it works and mm -hmm. some people think it's skate punk so whatever yeah. that's a weird one yeah. yeah i can dig i can dig i'll be skate punk i am not learning how to do a kickflip <laughs> telling you now <laughs> not gonna happen i'm 33 I years old was much younger <laughs> never got there I got a sloppy excuse for a kickflip when I was younger, but then I started wearing new rocks. You can't skateboard with new rocks. Oh, I was, before you, I was about to say, how the hell do you do that wearing new rocks? I used to, <laughs> great I used to determination. my DCs. <laughs> I used to be big into skateboarding, but I've always sucked. That was terrible. Like, really, the best I could do was a, a sloppy kickflip. And what was 
It could only be described as going up to the curb and slide along it, not a grind. It was horrible. Uh, and the injuries are received for that output? No, not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. oh, totally all totally three, though. <laughs> so then we talk about skateboards now, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we have to. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. There's a few skate parks in Edinburgh, and there's that new one that they opened up near Portobello. And I think that's quite. I've heard, I've seen it a few times. There's a couple of skaters around there. I think it's cool that it seems like there's more investment towards it these days from like councils and things like that, which is really good because it's a good uh, output for kids who want to break their bones. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's nice, you know, um, like I remember back in Aberdeen, there's like in, in Peterhead, there's like still a petition to get like one on the go. And it's been like circling around for years or something dumb like that. It's a sports park. So it's pretty much just yeah. like an urban sports park. Um, you, when you play, when you had a, a sports a sports park when you were a kid, you play ball games. It's exactly the same thing. You play friendly competitions between each other. You play little games. You're always working on your technique. So it's 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 really good just to in, in sort of general setting. I definitely back that that approach from councils. Yeah. Kind of trailed off on the end of that one. I was like, here we go. Where am I going with this? Okay, this, just bail, bail. <laughs> 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 definitely back that kind of approach from. Hmm. I wonder if people have actually tried to skateboard in the new in new walks that you're seeing some in new walks you were seeing that earlier. Yeah, someone yeah, skating in New Rock. I mean, I'm sure oh. someone's probably tried it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone, someone will know that definitely. Someone will have that down. But me, no, 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 no. I've got size 13 feet. I can't do shit in New Rocks. That's good. It's going to be that's, that's going to be really difficult to do that in these types of shoes. The right the right bricks or something appeared the appeared in DCs. Yeah, I, I used to wear DCs, but uh, the tr- the trouble with skateboarding is that if you have big feet, skateboarding just gets really hard. Um, it's especially if you're clumsy like me. So it, it was a it was a, a thing that I I did really enjoy at the time, but it was never meant to be. I I couldn't keep that up. I would have had to get like a, a, a big custom made skateboard or some stupid thing. It looked dopey. Yeah, surfboard yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> surfboard on wheels. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I first started back in the day, it was so um, using a fishboard because I'm an 80s kid. So uh, I had this sort of pink fluorescent fishboard. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember cool those things. Fluorescent That's colors cool. were once cool. Yeah. My one was green. It wasn't pink, but you know. Yeah, I, I got mine from a second-hand shop. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about sports now. We're not talking about the band stuff. And yeah, we've veered off. We're now in but, but, fish but, boards. Because, bring, 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 it, bring it back, Chris. Reel us in, reel us in. <laughs> as, as you were saying, pro, um, as you saying about genres, um, I'll have to, it's had this, I can probably say it's had this like you guys, but you guys are really, really, really techno you got some weird techie bits in the songs and mm. I think you got some black metal in there as well. Oh definitely. Yeah. The new, yeah. the new track you guys dropped a new track the new single out today and I just heard it and it's got that it's definitely got a bit of black metal in there. Yeah, that that one definitely yeah. It's yeah. kinda of hard to choose what, what tracks to go for as well because um we started with Satan initially and it's yeah. as you may have heard very different in comparison so choosing those songs to, uh, when we cover such uh, a sort of large pool of genres it's hard to pick what to choose to put out and it sort of best so defines those, you as a band let's do give a good uh, contrast though because like satan's very short and catchy and fast whereas rupture's much more of a, a more of a proggy black metal kind of is this a, a long sort of a song technical you know uh, and that's it's, it. that's and also, also through and through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one. That was his baby. Yeah. I like how you can cast the genre as like if Satan, Satan has a wee jazzy bit in it as well, which is pretty cool. Having that wee bit when the boy the boy build up to the course or something is pretty cool. Having the that wee funky bit. Metal. The scar yeah. bit in that. Yeah. Very <laughs> Yeah, that's, I that's think so. Cool. I... Having that in that. Maybe you guys should do something like Gen Groove Metal, maybe a bit of Gijia meets Meshuggah or something. 
Well, I was actually thinking the other day that some of the riffs that Magnus and Josh have been pumping out are, are kind of in that that kind of vein. Um, there's one we're working on right now, actually, that's got some of that grooving kind of quality to the start. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I can see that link. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of groove metal. Um, the, 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 even, say, uh, Devil Driver, Lamb of God and so forth, there's a lot of groove influences in their, in their sort of styles that I, I can really sort of blend with. So... Then I agree the sort of newer stuff we're kind of pumping out, or I would say the newer stuff in general, the tracks we're working on in particular at the moment, I think, uh, definitely ring some of that. So you might go for that sort of DDN, Wham of God sort of sound then, for this somewhere as well, in a way. I think Devil Drive is probably a smaller version of Wham of God, in my opinion. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's like thrash adjacent. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's got thrash. That. Yeah, it's got that groove in it, but it's also got um, some more technical sections. Yeah, you know, the usual bullshit. Quite modern and quite modern, modern standard as well. Like modern thrash standard. With like Trivium as well. They've got a bit of that as well. I was actually listening to Shogun earlier today. Oh, yeah. um, I actually got reminded because I was listening to Animus' new album, Animus Plug. Cosmo Creator is an amazing album. Um, and yeah, some of the riffs on that really reminded me of like early Trivium, like young Matt Heafy kind of style riffs. Um, he was a bit of a thrasher back in the time as well when he had these one here where he cut all off and they sang really cool Dean guitar he used to play. I thought it was really cool. Oh, uh, yeah, no, Trivium was one of my first really metal influences, definitely. That's such a great band. It's one of these bands I need to see when they ever come back from the dawn. Yeah, I haven't listened to an album, any like any album of theirs in like the last ten years, like maybe. Um, but if I like, if, if it coincided well, I'd definitely go see him because I imagine they put on a good show. I've heard good things. Yeah, I've heard good things about Fruit Trip and Live. Um, I'm in a similar boat. I haven't really heard them. I heard their newer material. So I have heard some uproar about their, their most recent stuff people were saying is pretty good. But I can't confirm that. I haven't checked it myself. Yeah, they dropped a new album they dropped a new album right as well. Not yeah, sure. that's yeah. That's the one I need you to check out as well. So I haven't checked it at all. But again, I've Trivium's uh not really well saying that I don't really listen to many bands really when I'm writing. Tri- I'm, I'm Tri- Trivium kinda of missed missed us being soon. They we're, we're a wee bit Older than Clark, so it's 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 like uh, by 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 that we would already passed our entry metal point by the time they come. I can't you see what I mean. <laughs> there was a few stuff at the very start of Trivium. I'm pretty sure I remember pull harder on the heartstrings of your martyr. Yeah, yeah. That's what, I, I I like that song. Yeah, um, I remember I remember enjoying that one thoroughly. But then I think some of their, a few of their albums soon after that were not as good and then they ended up getting better yeah. or something. I, um, I don't, like yeah, I said, I didn't really to, follow them. Like to, to me, like, like when they first sort of blew up was around then and I thought, great, this is like the first interesting thing I've seen on Kerrang! for years, you know? <laughs> it was, right, but then, uh, I don't know, I just got kind of bored of them pretty fast after that. And then apparently they got better again, but... Um, mm. I think, yeah, myself and yourself, Magnus, we kind of drifted off by then. Yeah. Um, I should give them another look, because um, like I said, I have heard good things, but yeah, just getting the time. Uh, but when we're actually writing stuff, I, I find personally, I, I don't really listen to too much music, because I'm scared of getting too much outside influence. I don't really want to copy people, is my biggest fear. Because you, you hear a melody, and then you find yourself kind of recreating it, and you're like, no, no so just do something different. There's so many bands out there that do stuff yeah. kind of similar as well. It's probably like so many, so many sort of like small independent bands that kind of maybe do us that are kind of mindful from these bigger bands. You just, this kind of, you just don't know about these bands out there, but they can do some riffs that are kind of similar to what bigger yeah. bands do. Cause... At the end of the day, as well, there's only so many notes. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, as well, it's, it's one of those things that, um, yeah, like you're, you're going to have some overlap you know, and people are going to have the same influences. I found it interesting, like the kind of wave of modern metal in the last 10 years, 
the guitarists, of, like a lot of the prog scenes have been really influenced by John Petrucci from Dream Theater. And that's like express themselves as the same in the same way through different songs and playing, you know. Like these guys have never worked together, but they're coming out with similar sounding stuff based on what they were influenced by. Yeah. Which in fairness is what happens in essentially every genre. Like you listen to Charlie Parker and uh you know, every like any other saxophonist from his era, there are similarities in how they play. And that's not to say that they're not still uh, fantastic and unique and wonderful players, but there are stylistic elements at any given time and in any given genre. And there's always a weird balance between using those features and expressing in your own like unique kind of way, isn't there? It's, it's super interesting. Yeah, because yeah. you, you don't want you don't want to uh, you don't want to straight up copy it. But I mean, you yeah, still want to take you still want to try and learn from the techniques they're using. And exactly. trying to figure out how you can utilize that without ripping their stuff off, because uh, mm-hmm. it can be done. Uh, we've heard it done time after time after time uh, in the past. It's just finding how to actually do it with each track, I guess. It's a hard line to walk. So, are you guys ready for the next question? Then. Yes. yes. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Eh? Um, one, one. I think that's one would be way good. To say. What, what hobbies and interests do you guys enjoy? Hobbies. Yeah, interesting. Uh, well, top of the list has got to be masturbating. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a that's right up there. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Next question. <laughs> no, nobody's stopping that. Let's be. <laughs> uh, if, I'm, if I'm not playing guitar, I'm just. Playing video games, really. That, that's just about the only other thing I do. Yeah, I'm big into video games. I've been trying to get into streaming on Twitch and stuff like that more recently. It's been uh, it's been good fun, but it's just about like settling into it, you know, getting yourself into the mindset of constantly being on and trying to be entertaining while you're playing a game. Yeah, so you're doing that live, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can use the Kenny be prepared for it as well, so... And this, is, this is where Clark slips in his little plug. That's your Clark plays plug. Hashtag <laughs> Clark Stop plays drums. Slash Clark plays drums. <clears throat> that is that your tracks ID. <laughs> yeah. I also do some streaming, but uh, I don't want people to come and watch me. So <laughs> <laughs> I do it a different way. I, I usually insult the people that come and watch me, and I do it for a very small group of people. And you're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Cartman tried to run a, a fairground. <laughs> I swear to God, you're such a cryptid. <laughs> so, what games do you guys all play then? You play all the same games all together, and yeah, like in a group, this band, the soul, or do they have their own sort of faction? I think we're all split around the place. I think we've got uh, overlapping, but we were all kind of on our separate, uh, separate areas. But there is definitely a lot of overlap. Um, I know Magnus, myself, and uh, Josh have all played Arma 3 a little bit together. Um, with Magnus Very and my friend Star Citizen. <laughs> like, there is some, some sort of games we play. But uh, for the most part, I think we're all, all usually off doing our own thing. We should really yeah. do something. We should do some kind of... Well, we won't do it, will we? No. <laughs> well, well, there's only one one game that works at all that's cross-platform, and that's Warzone, really. And my laptop could handle, like, um, low-intensity stuff. I've been playing a lot of Gmod recently, like Prop Hunt, Guess Who, and stuff. And <laughs> that's, it's a classic. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy that. Like, getting the big group together for that is good fun. But yeah, we can absolutely be, try. Down some prop hunt. I bet you can get Hell that yeah. to work on. So you play like uh, combat games or something? Um, well, I I like played a lot of first person, third person shooters. Um, cool. Uh, we play stick fights fight sometimes. If yeah, you haven't checked out stick fight, yeah. uh, so it's much. a really good, it's a really fun multiplayer game. Yeah, that's great fun. I'm, I'm much more of a strategy man. I play Supreme Commander, Dawn of War, shit like that. Nerd. Supreme Commander man is so good. Sorry. Uh, Supreme Commander is my jam. Uh, really? Empires. I didn't know that. Yeah, man, I fucking love Supreme Commander. 
Um, but but, look uh, at his eyes. Age look at the lust. <laughs> Age of Empires 2 was my like first intro, like proper introduction to gaming. That was the first game that I got properly into. What Age of Empires uh, 2 did you say? Oh yes. yeah. yeah, I had absolute that. gem of a game. Really sure. Uh, but yeah. Well. For, for a bunch of years uh, recently, I've just not had the ability to game because, like, my, I've had a really, really bad laptop for quite a long time. Um, and I just recently got a computer that I can game on, and I have been playing rather a lot of Subnautica recently uh, because yeah. it's a wonderful game. Josh played the fuck out of that as well, it's yeah. It's a terrifying game. Like, anything, Isn't it? Anything it, underwater yeah. that's that big, uh, there's a reason why Cthulhu is the top god. Like. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yeah. I'm tempted to give it a shot myself. Um, oh, I mainly fantastic. play on Xbox, so um, uh, I've, I've kind of disconnected from the rest of the guys in the PC master race. Yeah. <laughs> I've played a lot of uh, Dark Souls recently. Um, I've, I've tried so many times to get into it before uh, and just kind of petered out before you really break through the wall because Dark Souls is hard. It's a hard game to get into. But uh, one of my friends is doing a run alongside me and they're giving me some advice and um, summoning them to help beat monsters and stuff. It's, it's been good fun. 99% of the time, I am playing Total War in some form. I'm a, a big history nerd, so anything in that period, I'll just sit. But Total War in specific, I've played that for years now. It's getting terrible, though, so I don't know how, it's gonna, I don't know how long those mod, modded older games are going to last, but we'll see. Um, outside of that, I just play random stuff here and there. Um, a bit of Star Citizen, but it's not really done yet. So, yeah, yeah, it's not a game yet. <laughs> no, you can mess around with it. We do have a, a group of people we can pull from that we play with online. Uh, so we mess around with them every now and again. But yeah, usually just strategy games as well for me. Awesome. So, so I mean, the PS5, what do you think of the P- What do you think when the PS5 comes out, would you guys be hunting to get it? I think it's a great way for um, people to... Um, continue making money by making games on a PC and then selling it on a lesser platform. Um, it's been working out fantastically so far. Um, and then you can also get them to pay to play online, which is just genius. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's slowly people are going to start realizing that they may as well just get a PC. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it came down to exclusives. Um, I'm really into the Halo games, Gears of War, like a ton of other Xbox exclusives, and I use it as like just like a home media center, so it made sense for me. That's, um, that's the thing with the Xbox, though. The new Xbox is looking like it's going to have a lot of the advantages that a PC normally only enjoys. So that might be an interesting thing to see how that goes. Hey, maybe Microsoft will cock up. They always do. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And that's what I mean. So we're getting to the point where it's like, well, for the price yeah, you're paying for it. Yeah. May as well just get a PC, and you can upgrade it slowly. That's the the beauty of the PC is that um, as a, a less affluent man myself, um, I could get a, a sort of a basic rig and then slowly upgrade it over time. Um, beforehand, I was a console boy. I played PlayStation for years. Um, it was the switch to the PlayStation Three to Four that got me, because in PlayStation Three you could play online for free, and uh, I played a I think it was GTA Five at the time with a lot of people online, and we all moved over to Four. And of course, you had to pay for it, and I just got this PlayStation 4, so I unplugged it straight away and put my PlayStation 3 back in. You know, went back on Grand Theft Auto and that. I was like, here we go, yeah, I'm not paying to play online. God damn it. That's 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 a, that's the shit thing to do to the PS4. Why would they do that and they could pay for free? Because um, Xbox were already doing it and they knew they could get away with doing it. So like, well, if we know we can get away with doing it anyway, let's do it. And it's like, well... Counterpoint, Sony had massive data breaches because their security wasn't any good. <laughs> and that came... And, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure that came about because they weren't protecting their servers properly. That's on them, man. That's on, that's on yeah, them. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But I was a PlayStation. I was definitely in the PlayStation camp before going to PC. But um, I saw Magnus, I think it was, it ended up being the, the one that finally converted me because um, I sat and watched him play games on Steam. And the price of games on Steam in comparison to what you could get on PlayStation, I was always very, very envious of. So when I finally got enough money to get a cheap laptop, that was me sorted. I was cheap games for days. I have owned a grand total of one console in my entire life, and it was a Nintendo Wii. <laughs> <laughs> P- PC man through and through. 
I don't think many people play the Wii these days. Everyone's probably stuck to the PS4s and Xbox mm. Ones. To be honest. Well, I was a. I only got the Wii because there was a PC game where I was like, right, I need, I need to get a, uh, something. A social for... console. Yeah, yeah, social <laughs> console. It was like like the PC. PC no, you can't play with people. Pals, you got around, so it was like at the time the Wii was. It was the obvious choice for that. It's like this is nothing but party games. Yeah, yeah. We, we, the, the amount of hours we sat playing Smash Bros was obscene. Oh, and and Smash Bros. I mean, talking about exclusive obscene. titles, exclusive titles. I, I had to get that game. Yeah. <laughs> wait, the wait, the wait. The, I think it's the thing you create your character as well in in the V's well. What was that again? Was the wee thing the, the me channel? Yeah. 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 Was... I've got all my pals as me's. Yeah, we have a, a, you have a, an insane me collection on your own. Yeah, because I just got any, anyone, anyone who ever came round, it was like, like the postman would come, would come around and was like, here, come in, make it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making an army, come join us. <laughs> and it's I'm literally me. just like a conglomeration of like drunk party goers and people that passed his house at three in the morning after a night out. And <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, all the, all these consoles. I mean, so many. It's, it's been it's been good. There's been so many good consoles, but I believe the PS5 might be the last of the console to be made. And then don't know what's going to happen then, because I think people I mean, are games. potentially, but uh, probably, the, probably the VPS, the VPS, then fifty or something. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna go away anytime. Particularly I'm soon, but interest over the exactly. next few generations is going to fizzle out. I think. Well, let's think people won't be buying any physical CD CD copies. I think the digital one. I think they'll be all digital download games in these days. So I yeah, well, I mean, I recently uh, gave up on buying. I was like, I was always staunch. I was like, I like having a game, a physical thing, a disc. And I was recently just like, this is just taking up space in my house. And I started doing digital downloads and didn't look back. I was being an obsolete dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, as as myself, I play um, wrestling games. To be honest, I played a bit. I played a bit of that. Um, yeah, I've seen a bit of you uh, making sin in uh... <laughs> in 2019. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll have a we'll have a soul and sort of playing Patty and WWE. We'll have a we'll have a sort of match together or something in the game. <laughs> try, and, try and get all these guys, guys, get all you guys included. <laughs> it's just a matter if they can get the like hairstyles. It's not, it's not variation of hairstyles and <laughs> stuff like that. You're kind of limited to a couple of hairstyles and a couple of that. And um, there's not many dreadlocks in the games either, which is a shame. I like if they had more dreadlock options. You can make, you <laughs> uh, can make Johns and Davids or something, or guys and yeah. Corn. That would be cool. Well, you have my consent to use my image if you do wish to. <laughs> I mean, maybe get the glasses on, get the glasses on, and that, and the and the and the and the and the beard and that, and all that. Get all that. Maybe get the I think I think get the, like, the hair dye or something as well. The pinky hair dye in the back as well. So I'm much. Sure, I'm sure Clark would make a fabulous wrestler. I would. You got that? Do you guys play WWE wrestling games? Nah. No, you're not. I, Used to be used to play a bunch of them on PS2 when I was a youngin. Yeah, I was about to say maybe way back when, Thanks. way back. But... Played, played a couple of the SmackDown games. Mm. SmackDown, you come to pain and that stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it'd be it'd be good when they do if they do that with the PS5. Play will play your PS2 games on the PS5. That would be insane. And then you could even get all these games at like the attic or something that have been sitting there because everyone's been on the PS4 and they kind of play the PS. Two, one, three games. That's the thing. Yeah. I think you'll find you can do that on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PC emulator. Well, that's for days. Like, that was one of the reasons why I've not really bothered with consoles for a while because I'm always too skint to get the new ones, and I'm more interested in playing the old games on the old ones anyway. And the best way to do that is on a computer. So, <laughs> kind of shrug. Mm-hmm. So that way you can mod the games as well. Oh, mate, I'm not quite that technically. Uh, well, I don't know quite that much about code, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, people generally mod games anyway. They make them better. And 
Yeah, oh, mods right. mods are definitely a, a lifeblood of old games. Uh, they've they've kept so many old, like the original Mountain Blade. Um, that's still good with the mod, mod, amount of mods it's got. They've released the new one recently, but uh, the modding team can keep a game going for so long. It's unreal. Yeah, that's that's what I mean about games. And uh, this is that if you don't if you don't put mods and you don't put any updates, then the game will kind of just fade fade to black or something. It will just all the players will probably just uh, move away from these games and. You just find all the bugs and that not being fixed, and then something else disappears, and that's you. It, it's kind of it's kind of a hit and miss. These games are just developers where we just create these games, and they end up getting a, a bug or two left behind, and then yeah. they report a patch or something, something like an extra patch would just pop in, and then. There's another bug, and then you have to patch it again. I don't know if that's something games happen, something it's like things that just appear and then disappear. Am I tell back? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still rubbing my crotch with it. You know what? You can you can keep it for now. <clears throat> so yeah, sorry, we- where were we? <laughs> yeah, we're still talking. Yeah, we're still talking. Uh, as I was saying, yeah, I think I think. Keeping the games updated would be a thing as well, and it would definitely help keep the players coming back then and just abandoning the game and ending the support. And then that's the game's kind of like WWTK20. I think that's like the opposite of 2K19. So, and then I think most of the players are just one to the house for that game because that game is absolutely a cheap title. I have seen, I have seen that. Um, it's it's so broken. <laughs> I'm broken. I'm haven't, broken. They been make, haven't they been making the same game for years? Uh, yeah. isn't, isn't, like the, isn't it like the same sort of idea you get with like a FIFA game where it's the same principle? Yeah. How do you then go and break it? Because it yeah, worked on yeah. PS2, I remember. You'd think, right? <laughs> As a year, tight. It's a year game like FIFA and then NBA games, stuff like that. And this come out every year and they don't have much, much of a weather window, they add features and all this be like a game breaking thing. I think what the, what they did to 2K19, 2K20 also, they wanted to make the game a, a bug break or something. Yeah, it's just basically they want to put in less work and get more, or you know, uh, publishers are pressuring them to produce more with less time. You know, and we're getting into a culture now with the fact that you can patch games from day one and download them where it's perfectly acceptable to just release a game with a ton of bugs. Like, you couldn't get away with that before. And nope. yeah, it's... John Romero managed it. <laughs> I think John Romero is the exception rather than the rule. True. Well, also, also, games are way more complicated than they used to be. It's a lot harder to release something that's bug-free because they've got so much more content. You mm. know? I mean, something like I mean, imagine imagine ensuring the the whole of Skyrim is bug free, that enormous world, you know. I mean, or or or, or one of the cities in GTA Five. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So well, yeah, it... sometimes we just don't really think about the scale of video games these days. See, 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 I'm a software engineer, so, so that's, yeah. that's, I kind of, I kind of have sympathy for, for <laughs> games programmers. <laughs> I guess yeah. it's just like screw, screw that, uh, that, that <laughs> set of, set of requirements. <laughs> you know? I mean, GTA, GTA. If you look at GTA, I think they would take them used to create that game, and then probably it would take them used to hiding it all the, all the wee crammies and stuff like that to get rid of, be out, and kill off. It'll probably take them years to do that as well, get all the bugs away. Yeah, so, they'll they'll yeah. they'll be milking it long after the bugs are finished, I'm sure. They're they're really really Bug working that GTA five model, aren't they? Now we yeah. said that well, to be honest, they should have they should have been working on a new title, but apparently they'll be releasing the game again on the PS five. So Yeah, yeah. GTA five's coming out on the PS five and they're also they said GTA six is gonna be set in like the nineteen seventies. Uh, so that'll oh, that, be that, that's different. gonna be cool. Maybe Edinburgh, nineteen yeah, seventies Edinburgh would be cool. Puts me in mind of uh, back in the day, um, Magnus's older brother ended up making a a, a mod of GTA oh, Two, yeah. uh, and I sat with him for for days, just were drunk 
really, really drunk. And we're just, um, he sat, sat there and basically we're going through the different maps of Aberdeen and recreating the entire city. And then he ended up getting a bunch of friends and he basically made an, an online server of a modded Aberdeen uh, GTA 2. And we came on and just messed around that for, for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> that's probably the closest thing I've ever got to a GTA based in Scotland. But, uh, yeah. So did the did the map actually get get out? Did it, did the map get? No, released? I don't. I don't think he ever released. Well, well, it never got finished enough. But it, it's it's he's got it lying around on a hard drive somewhere, no doubt. I don't, I don't think it was ever to actually mod and release it. It was more just for us to kind of mess around on. It, it, um, it's, just, it's just Andy. Andy gets my brother. He gets these ideas in his head, and once he's got an idea for a mental piss take that he can do, he, he's up for days <laughs> to just, just <laughs> making sure that it happens. It's going to take you. It's going to take them ages. It's going to take you guys ages to do all that, that map. It's going. It's going. It's going to take you probably like a year to build all that Aberdeen. It's going. Oh, it definitely wasn't the whole thing by any means. No, it was just the city centre. <laughs> it, it, it was actually it was really detailed. You you could drive through the Trinity Centre and down towards the train station and everything. There was a, a lot of small <laughs> details that were very very pleasing if you if you know the city. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I would have been cool to see that actually. Maybe. It's, Maybe it's the case if it was a lot of East End people will be feeling on you. There'll be so many people out there, out there will be streaming it or something as well. I'll, I'll, I'll bug him and see if he's still got it somewhere. Yeah, that would be, that'd be interesting. I'd, I'd actually like to see if he's, um, even just to mess around in it. It'd yeah, be, yeah. be a bit nostalgic to see that game again. Or that mod, I should say. That would be cool. That would be cool. That'd be cool. So, uh, <laughs> guys, uh, we'll ask you any, any other hobbies and interests do you enjoy as well? Apart from gaming, which things do you enjoy? Uh, let me think. Read a bit. <laughs> Science. Uh, I, I spend a lot of my time <laughs> doing maths and physics. Um, outside of that, there's not really too much time. There's metal and science and then everything else. <laughs> and that everything else is usually reserved by gaming. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's from metal signs. I think few factor would work out that as well. Few factor metal signs. That's that's going to be <laughs> quite more more up, up the street. The signs. I think in Justin metal would be quite a cool drama for signs. <laughs> I dig. I dig. Dig that out. And what about you? What about yourself? And what about yourself? Is Pat? What do you do? You do it? I um, pretty much spend all my time doing music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm just like I'm trying to think, like, because these days, yeah, I'm. I've always got like a few projects on the go. Um, so I've got NASA, I've got ILO, I've got this new band uh, that's hopefully going to get some music released soon. Um, got a few other commission things in the works for recording when everything gets opened again. So I've got a lot to juggle, and um, I mean, a lot of the time, what I'll do is I'll stick on like a series or something like that that I've watched before and. Uh, kind of half pay attention to that and half do work. Uh, but I mean, I used to do art a while ago. It's like um, with uh, stencils and spray paint and stuff like that. But I just haven't really had the space for it or the time. I used to do a lot of writing as well. But again, all the creative space in my mind is just taken up by music these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that keeps you busy, and that keeps you busy. All the all these bands and projects that just keep you going. You can tell he's a drummer. <laughs> he gets all the, he gets all the, gets everyone to take, take on them or something in all these bands. Just, just like, yeah. Ken, just like Dave, but, just like Dave as well. Ben puts us everyone to shame there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, yeah, I was just kind of thinking, basically, like uh, Nassau and a couple of other bands, pretty much are my hobbies, and then the like wedding bands and all that kind of crap that I do to, to make money but there's not a really a line between them like I'm in a Frank Zappa tribute which is kind of intermediate I make a bit of money from it but it's mainly for fun um, and yeah so there's, there's not really a line so it's kind of hard to answer and say specifically which projects are hobbies and which ones are part of my career yeah I mean I kind of I kind of see it all as a bit of both really quite odd yeah i do like I, I love reading though i read a lot of sci-fi i've been on a massive space opera binge for like two three four years now 
uh, just reading all the space opera I can get my hands on since I read the Culture series by Ian M. Banks, and I just fell in love with that whole kind of concept. I really do need to give the uh, Culture series another go. It's so good, man. Like... I read like half of this the first book uh, in the series, and then Ben's like, "Oh no, no, man! You need to read like the you need to start for book five or whatever it is." I mean, they're all standalone books. It's not it's not sequential yeah. or anything. So, I know so which one I you know. start from. And I guess also I do have a degree in physics. So I'd, I'd, like I don't really do anything with that at the moment, so I don't know if that counts as a hobby. But I also really like maths and, and stuff like that as well. I watch a lot of maths YouTube videos. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if that I'm, counts. I'm with you. <laughs> Simon of maths, uh, Andrew Dalton. Um, yeah. I can't remember the Three physics blue, one brown. Like yeah, yeah. Lots of physics. And you can often find uh, me and Ben mumbling away in the back of the car as we're driving to a gig talking about complex numbers or uh, some random nonsense that we've kind of drug, drudged up from the, the depths of our brains. Nerds. There's yep. a lot of like v- intricate arguing about very fine details. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare. So, um, is that if, is we, um, what, about, what about yourself, Marcus? Literally just Guitars, video games, and most importantly, wanking. Yeah, I mean, we already got Magnus's answer, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I got into the top of the list. Yeah. The circle ends <laughs> where oh, it oh, begins. My bad. Well, oh, you would have been uh, you would have been touring uh, with Scumpulse during uh, this sort of time. If it wasn't for the yeah. quarantine. Um, yeah, we, we had a yeah we had a tour booked, but uh, yeah, so then everything stopped. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was in Germany. I think everybody's stopped to, and it's the same. It's the same about uh, bands. Everything's just going to a halt. Like as a as a train pulling in the station, everybody everybody's basically not able to do any tours and gigs and that at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So how do you guys actually feel about and um, and st- things like that? And uh, it's the right call. Obviously, we're good, but like you know, what we really need to do right now is button everything down and make sure we can actually. Uh, you know, safely return to to our industry yeah. when we can do that without, in, you know, endangering people. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, the person affected most by this of us is probably Ben, being a professional musician, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. I'm not a good person to talk to about this um, because uh, essentially I'm in a, an odd situation where it's actually really nice so, like, <laughs> I am very worried about in the future whenever I need to start gigging again to make money. Uh, but because I was already in the process of, like, setting up my professional stuff, I wasn't making uh, full wage yet, so I was on universal credit. Uh, so where a bunch of people that I know have had to go through all the hassle of signing up for that and trying to oh, get through right. all the views. I was already in it, so Absolutely. I'm already. I already have the support from the government um, that other people were having to access, That's and it means that I can basically just sit at home and do literally whatever I want to do, because what I want to do is music. That's my job. I can't do the things that I was normally doing, which were related to the bands that I was performing with, like the wedding bands and and yeah. things like that. So, I'm basically doing all the things all the composition all the learning how to use uh, music software uh learning some old piano pieces that i started learning years ago and never quite managed to get through uh, <laughs> and basically trying to get kind of my own stuff together because obviously if i can't perform with all the bands that i've been working with for another year or whatever i need to be able to do something by myself so i'm trying to kind of get together enough stuff that i can start having mm. a, a half hour set or a, a, a few different bits and pieces that I can do with my own accord. Um, so yeah, like long term, it's, it's, it's kind of worrying. But in the short term, it's kind of like a, a pleasant dream that I don't really want to wake up from. <laughs> mm. oh. Oh, oh, screw you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> <That> was... 
<laughs> but yeah, there, there's there's a few there's a few um, things that we are definitely missing. Uh, we had the Metal to the Masses uh, Scotland final we're supposed to be doing uh, yeah. with some awesome acts. Like I want to give a shout out to Hate Ball. Uh, those guys are fucking baller. Mm, um, hate Hate Ball. Yeah. yeah. Hate Ball. Uh, yeah, you guys won it as well, didn't you? You guys got to the same. You got to through the final. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, and I think um, Hate Ball were in the semi final with us, and so were Engines and Vengeance. And uh, yeah. we, although we got voted through, uh, they both there was two other uh, acts from all over Scotland, and those two just happened to be the ones chosen to go through to the final with us. So there's a lot of the bands that were three of the bands that were in the semi-finals are now in the finals, but that's been put off till next year now. But it should be a, a decent night. Um, the, the, the lineup is is looking pretty tasty. Yeah. Now, I was um, to that as well. Hmm? I, was, I was looking forward to the, the final and thought it was cancelled. I was, I was yeah. just kind of what I was wanting to go to that. It was going to be, I think that was going to be an amazing night as well, seeing, not, seeing you guys pray and hateful as well. Yeah, it would be. Um, it would, it would, hopefully, it will go ahead. Like I said, it's the date has been rescheduled, so they are trying to push it through because Scotland Rounds got so far. Um, but we're trying not to think about the competition side of things too much. Um, we're just trying to enjoy the night because the gigs so far um, this year for Melts of the Masses in Scotland have been awesome. So yeah, it's, like, it's, it's literally so just trying to enjoy the night. The lineup is awesome. We know um, we've gotten to know uh, some of the members in Hate Ball and stuff after the semi final. Uh, so we know the the banners top notch. So we know we're going to have a good time. So we're just looking to literally go there and have some fun. Yeah, I mean, my, I, 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 my philosophy has always been I can't be arsed with. Um, uh, with battles of the bands because I'd been in them before and always had a really bad experience. And these, these guys will t- t- tell you that I, I'm like, no, I can't be arsed with it. You know, like, they don't care about doing battles of the bands. But this one's been a massive exception this year. Um, it, was, it sort of changed hands. It used to be in every blacks and all that. And it's just been a night and day difference. So much more fun, so much more, more worth it, you know? Just friendly. Yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, camaraderie is nice. Yeah, there's there's less of the um, don't I don't want to go up when this other band's playing or let's just stick back. There's less of that and there's more. Hey, and this other X or Y band's up and you're playing already that night. You're going up to the front anyway to try and show your support for them, which is yeah. it's an awesome sort of just setting, having fun, if you will. Just enjoying it for what it should be. Uh, every other treating it like any other gig, which is support the other bands that are there because someone's going to go through. But I mean doesn't make a difference as long as we enjoy ourselves um so just treat it like any other gig really yeah i mean it's good you guys but it was a good one to be in edinburgh as well having that metal to the masses in edinburgh that's that was that was quite just off our street as well so it was easy well, that's the thing. they did it they did it all over the they uk rather than just making it in glasgow every round in glasgow and everyone has to come to glasgow they did rounds all over the country which is a much yeah. better, much better way of yeah. doing it and then you, you know, you get regional finalists. You know, that, that's that's such a better system. I think they did that one somewhere as well. I think they did something when when that Sunday. I think played do you guys as well. Yeah, yeah, we we played Forest Fest. Yeah, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. the one because I saw saw that we clip the you guys that and um, I think it was Kane Kane the Kane the bitch put up. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah, he filmed the whole thing. Good guys been editing all the footage, kind of sing, getting out all the single tracks and stuff like that. I think there's only one more uh, left to be released, um, so I'm looking forward to it. It's been it's been pretty nice so far. It's always good to get like footage of yourself back as well. You can pinpoint mistakes you make, and you know yeah. it just helps you be you know critique your own performance. And, and yeah, it was but... very easy to critique that particular performance. <laughs> 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 you could tell we were uh, overly excited to get out of a car and get some alcohol in us. Uh, <laughs> it was good fun though I um, always enjoyed playing for us uh, it's actually coming to a close now for now um, apparently that should be the end of it and they're continuing as Long Arm Fest which I think is moving to Glasgow um, oh, okay. so it was good to actually get up to another for us um, it was our second for us before it stopped and we, like I said you know, we all came from smaller villages uh, so the idea of bringing metal to those small, smaller sort of scenes not all for that that no one needs metal more than the people living in the little villages of the UK. Trust me, those people need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a uh, it, it feels good to to go into wee towns and play like that's right, a, all the metal. Yeah. <laughs> the tax deductible charity, right? 
<laughs> that was actually really cool. I didn't really expect that as well, having him bringing up the metal into a wee small village, and the wee, and everyone would have brought all the fans along as well. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's definitely definitely a good feeling because I mean, um, uh, usually people living in small villages they, they're traveling out all the time to go to support the music scene. Uh, they're always catching stupid long train tickets and staying out in uh, cities far away and whatnot just to go see some bands. So it's good to actually bring it towards them if you can. But the trouble is that it's so rare and far between you can actually do that. There's not a lot of places that actually can sustain themselves in those sort of situations. Um, so we take it when, whenever we see the opportunity, we'll usually try and grab it if we can. So yeah, I mean, maybe remember that cat's home. Maybe some of these bands will actually start playing these maybe places outside. Outside, maybe they'll have like North Berk or Dunbar or something. Places like that. So have like some metal bands. It's the wee small one in the mill places. You just drive through, and then there's just have like a sort of metal gig, and it's on. It's kind of on a good link as well to Edinburgh. As well, so hey, anything, anything can catch on. It's just all, all it takes is for some kind of social fad or some kind of uh, social setting to catch on with it, and it'll, it could take off and be a, a thing lasting for generations. But yeah, it's just for that to actually happen, I guess. And it, and it, and it takes people doing it and you know stepping up and putting shows on. You know, like like I mean, big ups to the guys at Forest Fest for for doing that in a wee town, knowing that they probably won't get very many people there that. They'll have to get bands from far away. They'll have to try and convince bands to travel and stuff like that. And they're doing it anyway and still trying. So, you know, yeah. good for them. Yep, yep. Awesome stuff, guys. Um, so, we'll move on to another question. If you guys are ready to move Let's on. Do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well this, this is going to be the best one, I think, at the lot. Um, what guitar, basses, and drums, and. Mics, etc. Gear, do you guys oh, all this? Yeah, the, the, the gear nerd question. Yeah, the nerd. All right, who wants to go first? No, I'll do it. I'll go. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, on you go. Get yeah. me out of the way. Um, I use a Sennheiser EH, E845. E- um, the E845, I've been using it for around about 20 years. Not tw- quite 20 years, but um, close to no- now. It's getting on. It's more phlegm than microphone at this point. Yeah, it is. It's. Um, <laughs> It's a living thing in its own right. Yeah, that's do, what we, what It's we a really be. good mic, though. I honestly cannot sing the praises for this particular mic. It's not the same as the um, 840, and it's not the same as the 890. Um, it's a, a different kind of um, compress, uh, can, um, compress or noise compression system. And I, and I can rate it very highly for anyone looking at a new mic. It should be relatively cheap by now. That's me. I'm done. 20 years. That, that's insane. 20 years. Yeah, like, like, definitely kudos to their engineering um, in longevity because it's 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 a trooper, that's for sure. So you must have you must have got it when you were kid or something. Yeah, I was. Well, I'm an old person, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about our first uh, first consoles and stuff. I started on an Atari and a Commodore 64, where there was only three channels on the television. Um, so yeah. I was I wasn't too young. I was in my young teens. I started getting involved in bands when I was like twelve. Really, it would have been around about when I was thirteen ish. Yeah, so it's coming on to twenty years. Not quite twenty years yet, luckily. <laughs> oh man, I'm old. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, that, that's insane. Right. Uh, it's, uh... What have I got? Yeah, I've got a couple of Ibanez guitars. And mostly for NASA, I use an RG7621, which is, uh, which is an older... It, that's like the first fixed bridge production seven-string electric guitar there ever was, basically. I, I like them. I've, I've got the whammy barred version of it that I've had for years, and I really liked it, and I couldn't get on with anything else. So, And I need a fixed bridge one for NASA because we do different tunings so it's like well sod it I'll get the fixed bridge version of this guitar then so yeah that was good and I've got a Victory Kraken as my amp and I've got the cabinet with it and uh, I'm a big fan of the Boss MS3 or multi-effect switching pedal it's the best multi-effect pedal for a person using a real amp 
there has ever been ever. It, it, it's like I've been saying for years and years and years, why doesn't something like this exist? And Boss went and did it a couple of years ago, and I was so happy. I bought it immediately. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I use. So that must tend to be you guys pray. That must tend to be you pray then. No, no, it's just it just means I'm, I'm carrying a hell of a lot less shite on my pedal board. <laughs> and, and yeah, carrying stuff is a big thing. Yes, I'm, I'm a big um, fan of. I used to, I used to, I used to work for Atmosphere Light and Sound in Aberdeen, uh, a mobile disco company, and it was my job to go around setting up uh, discos and stuff like that in function rooms for weddings and stuff, stuff like that. Um, so I'm a massive fan of low footprint gear. So, so the Victory Kraken's a tiny wee amp that's really, really loud and all tube. But my pedal board's designed to be as as sort of minimalistic as possible. Um, all this kind of stuff. It's it's my, my sort of philosophy. That's what I like in gear. So, you know, your band has too much equipment when the vocalist helps carry stuff. Unpopular opinion: the vocalist should always carry stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Popular opinion. <laughs> maybe I'll say that's. I'm popular on these vocals, maybe. That's not. That's not how the internet works, Magnus. The minority, <laughs> as long as they're louder, that's how it works. And you have a microphone there for your louder. Is that what you're saying? Indeed, I'm the vo- <laughs> I don't want to start a screaming competition. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so I, um, I've i got a lot of different uh, stuff on my kit. Um, I, have first of all, start at the bottom. I use uh, Tama Speed Cobra double pedal. Um, I really, really enjoy um, those because they've got a, a real spring to them um, and you're getting some power back uh, in the attack when you're hitting down. Just one of the smoothest pedals I've ever played. The long boards as well, so you can use your heel as well. I mainly use Mapex uh, for my drums, um, and I have a whole hodgepodge of cymbals. I've got some Sabian Omni rides. I've got the 22 inch model and the 18 inch model. So those are um, cymbals made from two different materials. So on the inside, it's a thicker, dry uh, kind of like a ride. On the outside, it's thinner, like a crash. So this uh, symbol functions as a crash symbol, a ride symbol, uh, at the same time without me having to take two different ones. So I've got two of those, which means I essentially have three ride symbols. There's a lot of nice little things for me to pling and ting off of. I'm currently using a heisty giant beat 20-inch crash symbol as my main crash. I really like the bigger symbols. I think, yeah, the, the smallest, like, individual symbol I've got in my kit is 18 inches. Um, I'm using a stag 16 inch uh, I think it's a lion china. Um, I need to replace it and I'm gutted because apparently they don't make them anymore. I can't find them. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and find another cheap china that I can abuse. And last but not least, I use a Minel 21 inch transition ride for my main ride symbol on the right. It's uh, its design is that um, you can hit on the on the side of it like a crash very loud, and it'll the decay time's really quick. So you can hit on the side of it and crash and make that big crashing noise, and then go straight back into playing it on top like a ride cymbal. And the decay's so fast that you can get all the little ride bits in as well. Um, and I've been using that a lot. Uh, and I believe that's it. Oh, and Pro Mark sticks. I, I use the Mike Portnoy model, which is like seven A's or eight A's, I think. They're really thin and this is like a little bit longer uh, than sticks I usually, so I quite enjoy having just that little bit of extra reach. Boom, done. That, that's a, that's that's a recent name, so you got like Mike Portnoy sticker trust sticks. Yeah, you could, be, you could be like Dream Feet or Drum or something if you need. Uh, Mike, didn't Mike Portnoy thing. was my uh, original drum hero. He's the man that got me into drums. Um, my my thing back on drums. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Drum bag Portnoy. Yeah, he was so uh, influential to so many people. 
Yeah, and me too. Like 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 good videos and drums as well. When you hear Dream Theory, he sounds so good in these albums. Yeah, and he's like yeah. a fun guy, and he's fun, and he's just really fun when he's playing these Pokemon gets and just slows <laughs> those effects. Yeah, one of my friends actually um, does uh, recording for him. Uh, <clears throat> he's his like personal, uh, <laughs> pretty much his personal studio engineer, uh, <laughs> which is which is quite cool. Um, so it's kind of weird when you know that Mike Portnoy has listened to your band, <laughs> like. Because someone, sh- uh, Thomas showed him Ilo at uh, one point, which was quite nice. Oh, that, 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 that's cool. He, it's cool that to do that. I mean, maybe he goes to help. Maybe goes to you guys one day who's doing that. Mm-hmm. Hey, it would be nice. Could push it. <laughs> so if he gets the more bands, there's just more bands that yeah, get established as well. Maybe you see Mick Portnoy, maybe goes to some of these indie bands out there. Yeah. yeah. You'll get you'll learn you'll learn something new and then they might ask they like all this stuff. Just keep all these big musicians don't even listen to all these bands. Like you think there's so many good bands out there, but people just kinda get to see these bands. I probably don't know I probably don't even know some of these independent bands from elsewhere in the UK, like bands from Bristol, bands from Portsmouth, bands from Devon, Cornwall and that and all. Yeah. It's like there's probably like the one dedicated scene, so they're kind of like spits. spits oh yeah, team. I mean, um, I was actually talking about this with my mate earlier. It's the fact that it paradoxically you have so much more reach than you used to. You know, before you just have you know you'd have to rely on like local locally putting CDs through mailboxes and whatever. Um, and now it's so much easier just to put your stuff on the internet and share it. But the problem is now everyone can do that. So despite there being more reach, we're just drowning in content of all these really good bands. And there is a lot of really good bands right now. That's the thing. Um, from the sort of the underground scenes throughout the entire UK and probably the entire of Europe, if not further, uh, there's a stupid amount of talented bands coming up out of nowhere. You'll get bands from small little villages, uh, big cities in the middle of places that you'd never hear bands that they'd never uh, beforehand have been able to play outside of. But as uh, Clark said, with the, the sort of the platform we have now to sort of put ourselves out there, also lets us get in touch with promoters in other places a lot easier. You can look, look at us, uh, look, search partic- particularly for a local scene's music uh, sort of scene, I guess, a local area's music scene, I should say, and try and find the promoters that work there, and then you know shoulder your way into gigs across the country that way so there is a lot more opportunities in that regard but uh, there's there's no shortage of options of uh, decent underground bands at the moment that's for sure for white bands like there's a lot of band called definitely from france as well and i think you guys may not have heard that until i mentioned it so like so that's a band they actually played edinburgh and that and then blood red throne as well oh and nice and they were they were but that's the but they format actually quite a well known band but quite when that night came along everyone it was quite a packed night when they played opium and i was there and who was support i don't know who was supporting that night actually yeah i've never heard about them before i uh, mean they got like a dime bag guitar and they got like a dime bag with like right guitar on 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 mm-hmm. pretty much like a dime bag with like right <laughs> <laughs> is that see that's a very cool you wouldn't think you wouldn't think that but there's a there's a thing there's another dime bag out there <laughs> oh ben we never got round to your uh your gear your ben, ben. indeed indeed um i mean it's not particularly interesting i have two of the same bass one has five strings one has six they are the ltd esp uh, esp ltd b dash 205 and six respectively SM because they've got a spotted maple prettiness on the front um, and I use uh, TC Electronic uh, BH550 head and a Boss ME50B multiple effects pedal ME50 50B the ME50 is the guitar one it's, yeah it's, it's different, different thing different thing so it's very important <laughs> And then Josh, who, who, was the, who was the run through Josh's stuff real quick since he's not here? Because Josh also has some pretty toys. Uh, yeah, yeah Josh's stuff is much more interesting than mine. He has a 
Ibanez S570, I think, S520, something like that, and that he largely uses. He's also got a fixed raised one, one of those iron label uh, flame maple jobs. It looks very nice. And he's he's got an uh, EVH 5150 50 watt head, one of the newer ones, the Mark Threes, and he's got a uh, Line Six Helix, the big one, the full the full fat one. The Helix is uh, nice. The the Starship the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, that thing is massive. Yeah. So it's like it must be like driving it must be like driving a truck into the street or something. It's yeah, like more that. or less, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks it's a sort of pedal board that really belongs under a pipe organ. <laughs> that's insane so well so I that... don't know it's a bit it's a bit lighty uppy maybe a pipe organ and a gay bar <laughs> dude that's I that's would want to a great idea for a gay bar that... yeah <laughs> I'm totally doing that You're like converting a yeah, no. church into a gay bar but keeping the pipe organ that's the, oh my god it's such a wonderful irony right, done. can I be the house organist <laughs> yes <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> only only if you dress appropriately. Can I be the priest? <laughs> ben in charge of house organs. <laughs> didn't trust He's you. Like old 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 <laughs> Happy He's gonna to pray come for my supper. It's funny actually, you said uh, priest, because in some of the videos uh, for the ruptured video uh, I took of you the other day, you do look like you're kinda like your uh you're you're doing a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> so those are woodland creatures. We we've recently just done um uh, we're doing some random playthrough video and Clark and I took a little adventure down to the park and done some filming in a bush. <laughs> it was very romantic. So it's a music video for you. You've got a music video coming out for this uh, new track then. Indeedy we do. Um I was hoping to get it finished for today, um, but after heroic effort and staying up all night, I was like, I could finish this, but it wouldn't be as good as I can make it, so I'm going to give it a few days to actually finish up, put every single little bit of polish on it so it's not completely amateur. <laughs> so we'll maybe get it out on the weekend or something, it'll be a good time. Yeah, uh, hopefully, it'll be, it'll be nice. Like, sounds like it's going to be good with it, with, the, with it set in the bush. <laughs> I'm, I'm so looking forward to this bush scene. <laughs> well, the the play the video is primarily a playthrough video, so um, the fact I'm there is more on this side. It is is more in regards to guitars and clerks. You've got some, you had some decent footage as well of your. Yeah, I actually had some footage from when I recorded this. And I actually recorded the yeah. drums for this in 2018, in November. Yeah. Uh, and just through the amount of time it's taken to record everything else and get. Um, Things sort of with distribution and everything. Um, yeah, it just it's just taken till now to, to release. So I thought I'd lost all the footage of me uh, playing it, but I managed to recover most of it. So it's quite nice. It went from like a three guitar, you know, guitar and bass playthrough to oh, it's a full band now. Okay, <laughs> quick to the bush. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this video. It's going to, it's going to, I think it's going to look, it's going to look really sick, I think, by the sounds of it as well. I really can't wait. It's going to be good fun. Everyone did such a good job as well with, uh, with their filming. It's hilarious. Josh, like, I, you know, usually it takes like, you know, a good half an hour, 40 minutes. I mean, shit's in. We were there for about an hour. Um, and, uh, like when when Josh came round for his, it was like done in twenty minutes. Boom, that's it. Like practically no mistakes. It was just oh, it was stupid. <laughs> but to be fair, he did write the song. Yeah, and he's been like constantly tracking it and retracking yeah. it and re-recording it. So he's just got it nailed. It's just like it's just so annoying. <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to this then. <laughs> it's going to take it to some time to get all done then, by the sounds of it. So. Yeah. I've got a um... shout out well to Tess for helping, for filming me. That was a big help right. for her. Yeah, Tess uh, did absolutely wonderfully. I used a lot of her, her angles and moving cams. Excellent. So, we'll move on to the, Are you guys ready for the next, next question now? 
Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, so, um, is there new music on the way when you're reaching it? So, this, I think this is going to be a great one. Uh, well, obviously, that we've just re- released this track. Um, after that, we're basically knuckling down to record an album. Um, we've got, we, and those tracks will be on it as well. We'll we'll have even better recorded versions of them, hopefully. Um, but the so we've got a whole bunch of tracks ready to go. We just need to get started recording them. So we're going to get Clark in the studio ASAP on the drums, and then start uh, start on the guitars. And the plan is to try and do it in house as much as possible because Josh has been doing a lot of uh, a lot of mixing and mastering, trying to trying to learn how to do that. And he's getting some pretty good results. So we're thinking try and we'll just record it all ourselves, apart from drums, obviously. And we'll probably get sitting somewhere to do vocals so we'll, we'll we'll see how we end up doing that but uh but yeah um after that it's recording an album as fast as possible we've been sitting on these songs for so long and we really need to just get them get them out of the way yeah although, um, there's sort of two general ways you can approach the band as a sort of main which is you either go for the online presence or the the live shows and we've very much went down the live shows route yeah we, we really really enjoy playing live uh, so the idea of the amount of time you've got to put into recording, it's it's hard to kind of persuade yourself that right. Okay, we need to actually get this done. It wasn't until we'd been sitting on them for as long as we had that we're like, okay, no, this is getting silly now. We need yeah. to actually start tackling it. But it it did. Um, did luckily we were forced to stop gigging in this instance. I say luckily, but um, it actually put us in a position where we were confronted with actually getting it done, regardless. Yeah. I think it's been productive for us in that sense as, as much as we have really missed getting the gigs on the go yeah. i mean that, that that really lit a fire under me like i mean i i, I just sat down with reaper and and roughed out all of the tracks ready to go ready for us to start filling them in and um and we've got a nice select we've got a nice select it's been edge, glorious so. just huh it's been glorious just watching all the projects uh rolling into that shared folder it's like yeah. every day a different track. Oh, well, we've got Arm again. Oh, we've got Clarion. Oh. It's good shit. It's good shit. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. using uh, Git, which is a uh, which is a uh, software version control software, in order in order to share 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 the projects among among us all, so that we can record social distancely, <laughs> write and record stuff. It's witchcraft, I tell you. You press a few buttons, and their things show up, and your things, and. <laughs> So, so the way that the way that maybe it'll go now is that uh, people will just get in, get their way to record it individually, and then send it through, and that. Something like that. I'll probably, I'll probably still get everyone in, uh, in a record it of mine, just to, just so that because when you record stuff on your own, it's really, really hard to get good takes to, to sort of knuckle down and just do it over, do it over and over again. You, I, certainly I find it's a lot easier if I've got someone someone sitting next to me going shite do it again shite do it again shite do it again <laughs> so so I, I reckon that's often a better way of doing it if you see what I mean it'll come it'll come it'll come events for all this saying maybe yeah. you can get a new a new recording of um, Let's King Ritz King as well maybe oh I mean, yeah that'll, that'll definitely be on the on the album yeah I'm that's looking cool. forward to getting that one done again I, I, I mean it's yeah. a soft spot it definitely sounds good as it is when I heard it. When I first heard it, it sounds like it wouldn't be a demo. Yeah. We, we never planned on releasing that as a, uh, at all. Like The only, like we, only reason we recorded that was so we had something to send to some promoters. Cause yeah, because no we had nothing, through, yeah. yeah. Nothing at all, yeah. so just that something was, to was, send. And then we were like, well, we've got it. May as well just give it away. <laughs> it's, 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 it, was the thing, it was the right thing to get that out there as well. And... Obviously, I paid to play that track on the on the radio show, of course. So, it's very much appreciated. Much. It has got um, across the board for being a bedroom demo. It has been on quite a lot of aired stations, which is uh, more a lot more than I thought would happen with that particular track. <laughs> <laughs> but the track itself, as as a musical piece, uh, I I really enjoy uh, that one in particular. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it sounds once we retackle it, because it was one of the earlier songs as well. And we we'll find, especially now, as we're kind of getting almost, you know, we overplayed a lot of these songs for ourselves, especially things, songs like uh, Clarion. Uh, and like, so seeing them now getting reapproached, um, there's little little bits here and there that are potentially being added to. I know 
uh, Ben's toying with a, an intro for a clarion with bass, so um, we'll see what we can mess around with. But it'll be interesting to see how it ends up, it comes out on the other end. It's quite sad, yeah. it's going to sound great. It's the other side of the sword, though, of, um, you know, sitting on all these songs for so long, is that we've really workshopped them down, you know. Yeah. Um, things naturally get added to songs over time. And I think if we'd gone in recording too early, there's a lot of a lot of little nuances that would have been lost. Oh yeah, yeah, it's so, yeah. yeah. And we've been practicing them so long as well. I mean, it just means that we're tired with them as well. So it'll be should be easier to record them as well. I shouldn't have said <laughs> that. Like, would would? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible at tracking. I'm so bad at it. Mm. Yeah, see, I'm I don't not, know if I'm, I'm I have not a huge like... trackhead, so I find I struggle to keep up with the uh, the timings of some of them. So getting getting them well rehearsed helps me a lot. Sorry, Ben, I didn't mean to cut you off there. <clears throat> ah, that's cool, man. Uh, I was going to say, uh, I think I maybe take a slightly different kind of view of this kind of stuff because I I have a lot of roots in jazz, and it's like you you wouldn't expect to play a song the same way twice as a jazz musician. Even the head, you'd you'd interpret it differently every time depending on how you feel on the night or whether you want to put a run in between these two particular notes in this particular moment or whatever, you know. Um, and then the rest of it is going to be completely different. It's not even going to be the same musical ideas, hopefully. I mean, that's that's my kind of ideal as a jazz musician. Um, so, like, for me, it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of whatever gets recorded, that's fine at that time, but it's always going to develop. I'm never going to be playing the same way in a year as I am playing now for most stuff. Some things do end up getting a bit more set in stone, but yeah, it's it's uh, it all just feels very natural to me, which is is quite odd listening to you all speak about it as if it's not as if it's strange. Well, I mean, um, <laughs> see, it's it's it is a little strange, but I mean, not so much if you think about us playing live. Uh, we do try to keep things loose if we can live. Like we're we're not opposed to trying something new or messing around with the track. Uh, so I, I reckon, yeah, that, if course. anything, that surely that might um, make things feel a little bit more, if anything, comfortable for you when we're actually uh, actually on in the Absolutely. studio or on stage. This is kind of what I mean when I say it was like a match made in heaven when I joined you guys, because I don't think there are many bands where that kind of jazz based approach would really sit as well. But it really is. It's fine. Like it, it just feels yeah. spot on for this particular group of musicians which is, is lovely it's great i love it it's wonderful. yeah no I, I really enjoy it as well i use a lot of improvisation and drums as well and it's like ben said i'll very rarely play something twice it's usually little things like fills but like a lot of the wee accents as well i'll just kind of it just depends on what i'm feeling the night and a lot of times i'll go into that kind of this is kind of a drum coma and then not realizing i've been playing on autopilot and just being like you know going for the first thing that comes to my head and it's a little bit jarring when you realize you're doing that in the middle of a gig and you're trying to have to pull yourself back just a little bit you know that's where it really uh, helps having rehearsed as much as we have again as you say the the double-edged sword of sitting on tracks for so long it does help us just mess around a little bit more live and enjoy it but we have been singing the songs forever so it's getting to that point but luckily um, uh, since we, we don't really need to rehearse any of the older stuff by any means, so we can just kind of enjoy it now and focus on uh, working up some of this newer stuff. And since we've all gotten to know each, how each other plays better over the last few years, um, a lot of the tracks that uh, sort of were kind of getting finished now, um, there are a lot of them the older ones. So a lot of the newer tracks, they have a lot more of the influence of our melding together or, or different sort of, uh, sort of styles individually. So um, they might be have a bit of a different sound to them, but again, I guess most of our tracks have a, a, a bit of a weird sound to them. So yeah, it's the sound the style is completely different as well. I can actually picture Wet's King having a really cool techie bass in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Honestly, the, the tech that Ben puts in the bass there. When we were looking for a bassist, we were just looking for something that could just do it. <laughs> it was, anyway, as long as the bassist can do it. Uh, and, and just sort of follow the kind of score, chord sort of structure that's what we're looking for, and we got Ben, which could do so much more, and actually just took a role that we were just looking to fill with the basic, and do with it what what a musician would do with the role if they were actually really trying to get their fingers dirty. 
Yeah, it's, it's a shame you can't see me because I'm just beaming here. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get ourselves like, out in this nice weather, enjoy the rest of it if we can. Of the sun being out and that. Yeah. yeah, it's been lovely recently. There is, okay. if, if that is not festival gig weather, I do not know what is. Mm. This could be a good mm-hmm. festival weather. Then yeah, we, it really would be. Then they'd be in a sweat box anyway, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm real sad about the lack of festivals this year. Yeah, it's a shame. Same with it. Same with everything being postponed. Like festival, like this is a no go for festivals this year. So I'm hoping. What about winter festivals? I wonder how that would manage the download and Budstock festival during during the during the winter fall time. <laughs> It'd have that to would be, indoors, be wouldn't it? Thousands of people freezing to death. That's what that would be. <laughs> <laughs> so, be less likely to sweat when you're praying. So, but maybe. you would have a chance to throw a snowball at Duran Duran. So, that would be fun. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't know how it's going to how how it's going to do, but it looks like it's going to be next year. By the signs, by the way, so at least the driving concerts is going to be the next thing. I think. Yeah, yeah nothing's going to be happening this year, I dare say. It's a shame. <laughs> Is this the rank, rank year? Everything's rank, bands, everything's. The year that didn't happen, you know? The year that didn't happen, yeah. Except for all the things that happened, obviously. Yeah, of course. At the moment, the, the things, the limited things that we can do, that's the things. For Sims Away, and. <laughs> to myself, I was going to do about the next question, but. Well, I think he's just going to lose. Just start the next question. You sure you could just talk about the what you're saying, so Yeah, I'll catch we'll catch him up. <laughs> you got guy you guys got any plans to do a tour? Uh well uh it depends no. on, on what's happening. <laughs> yeah. How, how can how can you plan a tour in this, you know? <laughs> I mean, but what but the hope is like I mean what I'm what I'm hoping to do is once we've got our album sorted, we can use that to punt to people and and just sort of try and book our own tour. That that's what we did with Scum Pulse, um, was to just get a record out as fast as possible and just basically force ourselves around the country playing gigs to just, just book the band van fuck it and and uh, we were out of pocket doing it but not by much it was it was still basically a cheap holiday and i think that's a good way of sort of getting your name out and making contacts and things so like once like focus at the moment's album but once we got that i think we'll be looking to looking to hit gig and take the gigging up a notch thereafter he has the turn he comes We're still asking. Yeah. Sorry, Chris, go on. Yeah, we're still asking. We're talking about tours. We're talking about um, what you, you guys got any plans for tour? Sadly, no. No. Yeah. Um, it's hard to get anything set up right now. Try to get in touch with promoters and asking uh, how this sort of future situation looks, if they're planning anything. They really don't know what they can and can't plan. So it's, it's really tough to just even try and predict for for next year later on next year we're just kind of waiting to hear some kind of development i'm, su- I'm sure the second things start to unfold um the promoters will be on that like they won't definitely be on that but until we actually get a bit more of a uh, solid idea about how things are going to progress it's, it's just very slow we really get some of the point was like here from here as well get all the get in dunk get in get in red crust and then shedding bra something doing some more getting some more stuff on as well yeah, yeah, that'd be good. They, I think mean, they they put on the they put on the web they put on the death of weights and but 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 um but the web from that so they were actually was yeah they oh, was okay. actually really cool. And it was June it's June I believe it does that June from FEM I believe he puts on these jokes and shredding bra promotion. Yeah, yeah there's, there's not a huge amount of promoters that are on the go in the Edinburgh scene at the moment, but yeah, they're they're pretty much the extent of it. I think I think in Glasgow there's a, a bit more on the music scene um, in regards to the amount of promoters, but yeah, it's 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 a hard market to push in some situations. Yeah, at the moment, I hope that we bound, we bound, and everything will kind of pack up again. 
Hopefully, man. I really, really hope. I really hope the the industry is going to be fine afterwards. Because we don't know what's going to wait for us on the other side of this. <laughs> maybe, pray, maybe you guys pay somewhere else or something. Maybe not pray in the cow gate. Maybe they'd be like, like alternative kid fans or something. Maybe you guys could pray elsewhere in the country. I mean, it really just depends. It's kind of it's just one of the things. It's way too early to be thinking about you know what we yeah. can do. We just got to monitor and wait for now. Hopefully it won't be long. Hopefully it'll be soon and later as well. And I guess we can, we can talk about things we'd like to do once things are back to whatever normal appears out of this. Um, oh, I'd love to do a festival, definitely. That's my that's my stick. I'd, I'd love to do an open air festival. That's. I would really love to get to Tech Fest at some point. Definitely, that sounds definitely. Like absolutely my jam. Or anything, or Arc Tangent as well. Arc Tangent. Is- Arc Tangent, yes. Oh, so my, good. I'd love to play, play some Arc Tangent. Yeah. And I, hope, I know like a whole bunch talk. of the Tech Fest people, and they're all so nice. Yeah. That's good. It's like, it, from what I've heard it described, it's one big family. It's really nice. <laughs> Do they like skater punk? Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. find out. <laughs> You guys are actually on a good question, that's the way, and that's the way I'm going to ask you. And what is a dream gig you guys like to play, and would you, where would you play about? Because that's something with festivals and with like supporting bands. Oh, I actually like to support, like, between supporting bands. How you like, <laughs> bands, what bands you like to tour with, and that as well. Like, dream in bands. Terms of, in terms of a dream gig, I would, my, my top gig that I'd love to play would be at Boomtown, a festival. Uh, and they, well, that's what it traditionally would have been because it was my favorite festival for uh, many years running. But then it kind of started getting a bit too big and a bit too commercial. So I'm not sure if that's still my answer. And if that's not my answer, I don't really know. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> there you go. That's my answer. How big is that festival? Oh, it's huge. Um, I can't remember in terms of numbers. Um, it's one of the larger ones. They've got like a few dozen stages. There's like two completely separate like towns essentially, where there's a big hill in the in, in the middle, um, and each town has like a dozen or so stages in it. Wait, wait, which festival was that? Sorry, Boomtown. Oh yeah, yeah, Boomtown. Boomtown yeah, I've, I've, I've wanted to go to Boomtown for a while. Like that, that would be so much fun. I mean, it's, it's not a metal fest, it, but it's it looks amazing. Well, the thing is, they just they just like last year, I think. Yeah, they added the a metal stage. Thing, they added a metal stage, so yeah, that yeah. Makes at the, kind at the of gates plate last year. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <isn't it? quality. laughs> so, so like I can and and Gogo Bordello, which is oh, yes, yeah. oh, they played that before ever. though. Oh, I've no, seen them there. We have to. <laughs> I, I saw them there a few years ago um, because they fit quite well into the kind of yeah, yeah. What was already there because there's like a pirate area where they get like punky folky music and stuff um, yeah mate there's a whole themed area that's like a huge the, the stage is a pirate ship and bands like go go bordello play on it all the time so you're telling me i Fucking could play awesome. a i could play a metal gig and come off and go stand about a pirate ship and listen to go go bordello yep and then same night that people, sounds amazing not necessarily go go bordello it depends who's there that year but they have played there at least twice um, no, you promised me Gogo Gorgo, Gorgo yeah, Bordello. No, we're on Gogo Bordello pirate ship, Ben. That's. <laughs> you can't just take something back like that. <laughs> That's where the bar the is right now. You put it there. <laughs> the actual pirate ship stage is one of the smaller ones. So when Gogo Bordello played, they actually were on the town center stage. Oh, we, but there's bands have... like them. We could be in the pirate ship stage. <laughs> <laughs> Bum rush the pirate stage. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll um... on whatever the metal stage is, presumably. Well, yeah, I surely. think the stage is downtown and the pirate stage is uptown, like up the hill and down the hill. Um, we'll make it a pirate stage. We'll, 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 board, <laughs> we'll board their pirate stage yes. and, and, <laughs> and sail it back to Nassau. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. As long as, as long as it's a pirate ship and it actually works and functions and actually see, sails, then that would be the ticket. The greatest heist. 
Well, we still got to pay in 70,000 tons of metal, which is the cruise that they do. Every oh, year. yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, would, that would be decent fun. That'd be a weird one, I think. Yeah. Um, it would be, a, 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 like I said, a decent crack, but it'd be definitely very strange. Just as long as they don't treat the bands like most cruise ships treat, yeah. treat the musicians. Yeah. <laughs> Although I assume not, because a lot of the bands that play there are, are big names. So. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what these bands actually do when they're actually on the cruise and they on that cruise ship because they're quite closely contracted them as well, so they're not yeah. like to jump in the water or that when they're on the on the cruise. Yeah. Unless it's in the Valkyrie or something at the top of the the ship, they have all the all that, all the kills in that they'll do all that. But they're um, quite close. I'm just trying to be thinking of. Uh... Uh, the, uh, that dream gig for me it would probably be supporting Devin Townsend that, that, that be sick. He's, is he's, just amazing it'd be good if they brought Shappy Young Lads back as well I was like I've heard I did the first track Young Lads I think they were a bit more with him in the band with, with the band all together it's, it still has this sort of Devin Townsend sort of feel to it but has the sort of band it's a bit of industrial and there's a bit of um, death metal yeah I liked like the, the kind of the vibe of Strapping Young Lad, but I didn't really dig the music as much. I liked the whole I am pissed off with it. Yeah, watch the table. Um, uh, like, like, it's that whole I'm so pissed off with everything kind of vibe, but as like an actual musician, I much prefer Devin Townsend's solo output. And some of it's like, even some of the stuff he's done recently has been heavier than the Strapping Young Lad stuff. Is it? It's, it's, it's... Yeah. Like, um, I'd um I can imagine him potentially playing some strapping young lad stuff with the band he's got assembled right now because he's got a lot of different musicians for his uh, empath tour. Of course, part two of that is now uh, postponed, but um, yeah, just I could I could see them pulling out some strapping young lad. That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. So he might, they might, he might, they might even get them in or something on board or something, and they can just play, they can kind of just come on and sort of be like a tour band or in the background, sat young lad. Um, I reckon he probably, if he was going to do it now, it would probably be with the members of the band he currently has. Um, because the thing is as well, the the guys from Strapping Young Lad are all doing their own stuff as well, like yeah. uh, Gene Hoglan especially is like. One of the most sought after death metal drummers, you know, Gene the Atomic he's in Clock. Testament as well. He's in Testament and I think he was in Fear Factory as well. So, exactly. Like, yeah. the dude does not have a lot of time on his hands. Yeah, he ain't going hungry anytime soon. <laughs> so, it's like Ken, Dave's like Dave, like Dave on the drums on here. He's kind of like the Gene Hogan for the Hogan from um, Edinburgh. Oh yeah, Dave is nuts. Like you see, you see he can like the local one of the vocal version of him. Yeah, D- Dave's just so fucking nuts at what he does. And you talk to him, he's like the most humble guy. <laughs> and it's like it's nice you know, like he, like he wasn't just doing three million BPM blast beats or whatever, you know. And you could hear every single individual blast. It's just oh, that clarity. It's just. You don't hear that from a lot of people, you know. And the size of the grin on his face when he's playing at Animasters as well. You can definitely tell when someone enjoys the band they're playing with and that man enjoys playing with Animas for sure. Dave Taylor is like the final version of my Animorph. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such an amazing drummer. I mean, he's just nice and chilled then. I'll actually give a wee quick shout out to him as well. You'll be you'll be hearing this as well. You actually um did an interview of Animal Wasp probably down on the on the on the on the interview list as well on YouTube so you can oh, also yeah. check out the Animal Wasp interview on the channel as well. Yeah. We used to uh rehearse in um the uh, Broken Drum, which is sort of Dave's hunting grounds as well. So we we met them uh quite early on, but I think we met them long before we ever saw them play live. I'm pretty sure. Long before. Uh, so I think the first time I ever saw them play live we were actually playing with them. Uh, and it was an awesome gig to go to. An awesome gig to be a part of, rather, I should say. Um, but yeah, we, we always have a we always have a crack in town when we're playing with animals. And same band, like I was there. I saw them. I think I just saw them 
the last time the last time I saw them was when they just dropped their new new album, the EP out and the just the cosmos. That game was so good. Uh, yeah. It sounds really we good. I heard that. On their album launch in Glasgow. We didn't manage to catch them in the Edinburgh one, but we went, uh, took a quick trip up to Glasgow to play with them there for their um, album launch. That was a, a decent blast. I forgot that we didn't play that gig in Edinburgh. I forgot that was in Glasgow. So I, I just assumed we were talking about the same gig there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, uh, any other bands you you would like to support and play? I'd love to support High Long. High Long <laughs> are amazing. Uh, if I could see any band live right now, it'd probably be them because their live shows look great. This, the Shield Wall on stage, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Adam, I, is this are a top one for me? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd go to that. I don't know, man. Like I, in the presence of Matt Gratzka, I think my penis would just shrivel up. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just want to just, just I want to support them just so I could walk up to Tosa Nabassi and tell him to fuck off to his face. Like, <laughs> oh. Oh. Like, how dare that man be that good at guitar? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Tosa I mean, he is kind of offensive. Like, yeah, so that's, yeah. like, he's like, oh, if I just get an extra few strings, I can just do the bass as well, yeah? We don't yeah. need yeah. Yeah. Oh, What's wrong, guys? Can't I'm... break your thumb like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, here's I can't. Style... So said, fuck you. <laughs> here's here's a here's a style of playing that you literally need a disability to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the yeah, thumb that, slap that, that's technique. literally the opposite of the meaning disability. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a super ability. It's a, it's a he's yeah. Tosin the is a superhero, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, damn it! Pretty much. Uh, also, like Snarky Puppy, Jacob Collier. Uh, yeah, Snarky and, Puppy. I fucking love them. I'd love to support them. I, I, I'm sure that NASA would never really get a look in at supporting any of these artists, but you know, I, I, I like to keep things mixed up. I would have I would have said Opeth, but they're shite oh, now, yeah. so Oh boo you. <laughs> boo you indeed. It's because the sound a bit stoner stoner than progressive death metal. <laughs> yeah. Get back to their sort of roots again when they were playing the Dwebians and stuff like that. All these classic Opeth stuff that we had. Just yeah, insane. I, I I like the new albums. I mean they still play all the heavy stuff live. Um, yeah, that's the, to, to the to the credit, like like, I mean, I've I've be, seen I've been to see them loads of times, and they always p- try and play like one song off of every album, basically. So that's that's yeah. So, so I mean, I, they, they'd still be great for to see live, I think. Last time I saw them, the encore was um, oh god, it was Blackwater Park and then Deliverance. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's quite a that's quite an encore. Well, <laughs> That's, so good. That, that could be cool. I think Opeth would be amazing. Um, not one of the bands I've seen live, but I'm hoping I would definitely like to see Opeth live. Yeah. It would be insane. Like, the best stuff like that, stuff like the classic, early naughty stuff would be pretty insane. So, yeah. uh, another thought as well Arch Echo, I would love to support them. They blow my mind. Oh, they're one of those bands I really need to actually have a listen to because I've heard their name being thrown around a lot. I've recommended you them before. They, yeah. their, their keyboard player is... You know what what Magnus was just saying about Tosin Abassi? Mm-hmm. It's, it's just that, but on a piano, <laughs> and you're just like... Ah! <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I mean, other bands saying like, in frames, I think they would be quite cool. To support. In Flames. In Flames. Uh, we just death uh, metal. <laughs> in Flames are a uh, similar thing for uh, Magnus and Opath as being in Flames. Um, like a lot of people, I really like their earlier stuff. But I, I everything from soundtracking before for me personally. But that's not to say their newer stuff isn't good. It's just not the same. And uh, so if I could play with old in Flames, that would be like the dream. <laughs> so you can somehow go back in time. Yeah, go back in time. That would be amazing. We did record the Clayman recently. This is their older album. 
and it's quite real. I mean, the album from 2001, The Claim, and that's, I think they did a wee recorded one. Yeah, I did actually have a listen he, to that. It's just getting a lot of uh, hate. Um, you, can't, you can see, you can, you can tell it's not as good as the original. Well, I don't know. I, I listened to it first and I was like, okay, I don't like this. And then I put on the original. I'm a massive fan of that um, Clay Man in general as an album. Um, I put on the original and then I started to listen to each section. Or section of the original, section of the new one. And I can hear what they're doing because it sounds a lot more open. They've tried to just give it a lot more room. The previous mix sounds a lot more claustrophobic. And there is benefits and uh, flaws to both of those approaches. When it was all compressed and put, um, sort of held together in a sort of more compact setting in the original recording, the the balance between the um, instruments was slightly different. It led more with the, a punch in the drums and the vocals you have in that multi-track technique he used to use. They would kind of blend in more to the rest of the track. So you had the drums leading, the vocals blending in, and the guitar would be sitting there with the drums in the forefront. In the newer, in the newer recording, um, he brings the vocals more to the forefront, I feel. The guitar doesn't feel as forward, and the drums don't feel as forward. It's not necessarily bad, because all the instruments individually, if you listen to them and compare them, are a lot more open. It, they all get a lot more space to work. But because they don't have the same compact borders, and they're all open more, and then with the vocals being more forefront, it, it kind of throws it off a little bit, and he doesn't use the same multi-tracking techniques in the vocals, so it gives it a different feel in that regard. So I wouldn't say it was bad, and I wouldn't say I disliked it. It's just, if you're going to be recording one of your most popular songs, it's never going to be received well. I can see what they're doing, but was it worth it? I'm not sure. I'd, I'd still listen to it. I wouldn't complain if it came on by any means. I didn't know I was going to get a TED talk today. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like me some in flames. Uh, and, and Anders is probably like my, um, probably not, maybe not my most prominent, but probably my, my biggest vocal influence from my younger years. Um, his older vocal techniques, they pretty much fashioned me in regards to going from quiet, whispered vocals back when I was like 13 and I couldn't do it properly. That made me realize there's a different way to do it, that you can do it. And I tried that approach and I kind of ran with that. So he probably had the most, the biggest influence on me in that regard. But his newer stuff has got a lot lighter. Um, mm. And each to their own. Um, if he's enjoying doing that, then he's enjoying doing that. Um, and I back it by all means. It's not really what I'm going to do, so I don't plan on getting lighter. I think I'm going to just go with it. And it seems to be, everything with NASA seems to be getting heavier. So there we go. I'm going to go down that heavier. <laughs> I think it's not even heavier. It's just that we're... Approach, we're doing more extremes, so we've also yeah. got some quite light stuff in there as well. It's so it's like we're we're already quite wide apart in you know the amount of genres we'll pull together, and it's just getting bigger, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, how did you feel when them friends were going to well nice for Edinburgh for the Wicked Rooms in Edinburgh? How we how did you feel about that? Um, did that actually go ahead? No, I don't think yeah, it did. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think I didn't think it did. No, um, I missed the tickets, so no. <laughs> I was I was thinking I'm I'm not really a big one for going out, uh, and we're writing a lot of stuff right now, so I try not to listen to a lot of other artists when I'm when I'm writing too much. Uh, but it was in flames, and I've never seen them live, and it felt like I should. But by the time I looked for the tickets, they were all gone, sadly. Um, so we'll see them one day. Yeah. I'll definitely see them one day. Hopefully they'll be scared of that too. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be cool. If yeah, that'll be awesome. That, then hopefully that'll be good. Um, so I think, guys, I think we're almost back to this interview. Just the rights. Is that, has it been good? Have you enjoyed it so far? Oh, been, yeah. I'm a, it's been, it's been good nice and chill. So I've just got one more question oh, just to music. ask you. One oh. more question before we actually wrap it up, actually. So we'll end it off a bond cell. What's any... Well, do you like you guys like to say any shout outs? Well, I'm, I'll start with some quick shout outs for some local bands. I want to give a shout out to Hateball, Animos, Tiberius. We've got, uh, of course, Scumpulse that Magazine supporting just now, Ilo. A quick little cheeky shout out to Bleat, another local Edinburgh band. Um, yeah. Engines of Vengeance as well. Engines of Vengeance. All the bands, uh, these are all the bands that we're going to play the Met for the Masses. So oh, it's in general. I mean, like Tiberius, for example, they've released a, an album recently. They're they're um, I think they were playing a set to play Tech Fest as well mm -hmm. this year before it got cancelled. Um, it's just um, uh, all the, we've been playing the local scene and gigging so much. We've, we've met a lot of the bands and we've met them a few times, 
and we've also share friends with a lot of the different bands so yeah. it's it's and any sort of support we can throw towards any of those we're always game for yeah yeah shout out to uh to all the petticore guys aaron alter and uh Doug Tard and all them, they've uh, they've been pretty supportive of us recently through the through the um Metal of the Matters stuff. They've they've been sh- showing up and digging it. So yeah. That has been uh, that's been nice of them. And, and they're always good. Uh the all the, the Hellraiser is an institution and I hope that keeps going despite all yep. all, all the craps the crap that's been going on here. with the COVID and whatnot. Shout to the sound guys. Dino oh yeah, Dino, 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 Dino and Richie, Dino. <laughs> like Richie Neal, yep. Any other ones that that each guys send us to show it or any more shows? Um, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head. Every yeah, single thing is, is this bad. Yeah, this is so much talent. It's, it's so hard remembering everything. I know. Oh, actually, actually, here's a here's a. Uh, curveball shout out the micro band if you don't like metal and you like nice happy pop music that's incredibly well written check out the micro band they're a wonderful local band that i really really love <laughs> i've never heard of them i'll give them a little gander oh, uh, <laughs> see well in that in that vein actually uh my pals in the band kairos they've just released their new album um and it's it's more kind of they've described it as when rush had their their synth pop phase. Uh, oh. This is their version of that. So it's kind of like they came from like a very prog metal place, and this new one's a bit more kind of synthy, poppy, but it's still got a lot of those good hooks and you know prog elements. So, Kairos. Yeah. Oh yeah! Shout out to uh, the Scum Pulse. We are the greatest band ever. Uh, check them out. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have what was the name drops in this saying what was the name drops you can just mention on on this you can share out your tits off the camera magnus for god's sake <laughs> we know how you earn money up in bamp um, yeah, for software engineering yeah yes only up in them there hills <laughs> that's what you call that's what you call your only fans account <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's hard to make that kind of money up up here. They, they've uh, it, it's hard to get hold of enough wool. <laughs> this has been really fun. This this has been really really good. This interview. I mean, uh, for so many names, we can share this out and men put all these name drops in the on the stream. That we we really appreciate it. that. Be really good to do that. And so, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think we're just about finished. There, I think. I think that's I think that's just, just a bit when this interview off and so I'll just do my own things, make sure you check out check in check out this check out in Sam Radio and I said this way to save a Sam Radio find check us out on Mixcloud and Facebook, Sam Radio, Sam Radio and Sam Radio.org so if you want to listen in live, Sam Radio.org. And if you check us out on Facebook page, Facebook.com slash this is Sam Radio for Sam Radio and Facebook.com slash it's a metal show for Sam Radio Metal Show, of course. And 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 then also you'll find me on Metz Crowd as well. And just type in Sam Radio Metal Show Metz Crowd and you'll be able that'll come up. And so, and yeah, make sure you check out check me out on YouTube and TM Headbanger. Make sure you give us give me a sub and a like, a comment and as usual, every YouTuber, I don't tend to like to say, say what YouTubers need to say, but everyone says that usually all these YouTubers just come out of these comments. But yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it, guys. Thank you for taking the time, man. And that's all. And thank you very much for that. We enjoyed this interview. Um, well, so, thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, yeah pleasure as always. That. Always a laugh. Yeah, it's, it's been a real, it's been really fun. I mean, so much to ask as well, and I'm just guess getting my interview with Paul. I'm just getting so many bands, and um, probably so many bands interviewed these days, and it would definitely help to get some more on as we go as well. So this is the way to actually speak to people as well. So, and we have just dropped our new single, so please drop by and check it out. You can listen to it for free, um, as all the best music you can. 
Which yeah. Tiatsu? Uh, I'll be good. I'll, I'll be nice, it'll be good to actually send that into Comic Pre as well. I'll be appreciate if you guys. Yeah, man. We can drop. We can drop a copy of uh, the oh. the last single on this one. Just drop through to you, and you can uh, go crazy. Yeah, yeah, we'd very much appreciate it. Got, got to get out, yeah. I've got to get State in there as well, and I've got to get your the one out today as well. Your new Good old band. ruptured. It's insane. I'm going to have to give that listen again when I, I'm going to have to give that listen. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. I, I really enjoyed it. Take it easy, guys. Well, and well, man, you keep, lovely keep, man. Keep, keep it metal, Take zombie, care. and hopefully catch yeah, you again boy. soon. Peace out. <laughs>